And welcome to another installment of uh, the P114 Filmmakers Podcast. This is Season 1, Episode 11. I'm Jesse Knight. I'm Randall Lanier. Nathaniel Hinton. Aiden Ford. And uh, we're here to talk about all things filmmaking. And uh, today, though I'd mentioned we're going to talk about it in the last uh, episode, we're going to try our best to talk about some of the gear and software and stuff like that that we've all been using. And maybe there's some new stuff we've been learning and maybe some stuff we wished that we could get our hands on to try and stuff like that. And then we'll kind of finish it off by uh, talking about some of the stuff we've been watching lately. Uh, I've been watching quite a lot, so I've got a lot to talk about there and I think the rest of us do too. All right, so let's, uh, let's, let's hit it. Okay, <clears throat> I'll start us off a little bit. Um, I've been immersed in gear and, and software since I went to film school and uh, gosh, it had been a while. I think dinosaurs were still walking the earth and all that kind of stuff. Um, in the late 90s, I, I started uh, grad school for film in 98 and I was there until I think I graduated in 2002. But um, when I got there, I was sort of, it was during a transition area, era which happens a lot in, in, with, with filmmaking as far as, you know, new technology everybody's using, okay, all the gear changes, all the software changes, all that kind of stuff. And actually, I'm at the po point where software was just sort of this abstract thing as far as, like, editing and stuff. There, there are some early versions of it, like a video toaster. I don't know if you all rem ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. That was a really early kind of weird uh, way to do it. Uh, the Media 100 was another device. They had one at my graduate school. Not a lot of people knew how to use it. I think I cut like one thing using it. It was like a, it was a intro to a movie some of the other students were doing and it was all this uh, Civil War. It looked, it looked like legit Civil War battle footage if I don't say so myself, but it was stuff I had gone out to one of those reenactments mm -hmm. and took a little Bolex, a 16 millimeter camera, which was old technology by then, but still used a lot. Just a silent uh, silent camera, you load your, your 100 foot roll of film in it, you'd wind it up, and then you'd have maybe, if you're lucky, 25, 30 seconds of a shot that you could get. You know, that's sort of, and then you'd wind it up for the next one and then shoot. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that SR2 that y'all were looking at uh, yeah. the other day, that, I wished I could have shot on that. That thing is awesome. Like, that, that's an amazing device there. But, um, so I shot all this stuff, and I cut on this Media 100. It's really weird. You can picture these CRT monitors, you know, the old style. Had this weird kind of computer. And it just seems so abstract than how we're used to using the current NLE systems, nonlinear editing systems we're using now. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of interesting. And then we got Final Cut Pro. And this is way back in the day. So the version we started off with was version 1.25. Of course, none of the teachers knew how to use it. They were, a lot of them didn't even really edit, but most of, if they did edit, it was the two VTRs, not to be confused with VCRs, but in a control track. Mm -hmm. And you would black out a tape, and then you'd have another tape with all your raw footage on it, and you'd do an in and out on that, and then you'd have it record it directly onto your other tape, and you'd just take it like that. And it wasn't accurate to the frame. We're, we're totally used to things being accurate to the frame, but back then you had to think, okay, what are the four to five frames I can kind of live with that that's going to land on? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it was more like that. And that's how a lot of, I cut a lot of my early stuff. Um, they did show us like splicing and cutting film, so I got a little bit of uh, a, a taste of that, you know, which I'm really glad I don't have to do that <laughs> anymore. But, you know, there must have been a big art to it. You know, you see the images and, and early uh, making of stuff where you see the editor in their place and they got all these strips of film hanging down all over the place. And then they've got this uh, moviola, this big bed basically where they have reels of film on it where they can pull it through a little viewer and see what's there and they use scissors and they cut or they have a little chopper and they they cut and then they either glue it together or there's a speed method where it's just a little piece of tape like scotch tape but wow. a different kind yeah you oh, know it, it is kind of neat yeah and i cut one thing like that but it's not you know you got that tape and stuff holding it together and it goes through a projector it's not going to be the smoothest thing in the world but what I discovered is that's just to hold it together. What they do is they bump off another print off of what you cut together. So that's all like one piece. And then movies are in several reels, so it might be divided up into like, I don't know how many reels go into a feature movie. It could be like four to eight or whatever big cans. 
and then the little when you're watching earlier films you get what they call the cigarette burn that happens in the side that means a reel it needs you need to change it over so you hit the switch and then the next one goes and somehow it's able to be in sync when it changes like that so it's really kind of a lot more to it <laughs> physically okay, that's you put into it now you do all that in the edit you get to make it all yeah, perfect so and it's one file and you pop it out there and bam which is wonderful i love it it opened it up for a lot more people to notice that you know, if you got one of these, you got a movie making, mini movie making yeah. studio right there in your hands, even the older ones. You know, it's, it's a really weird thing. Um, but that was sort of my experience in that transition era. So I was dealing with that, dealing with the bigger tapes. Super VHS were sort of the regular cameras we were using. They're these big clunkers. But, you know, they'd always say, oh, it costs, the, one of those cameras costs what your car does. And yeah, a car's worth maybe about a grand if I'm lucky back then <laughs> or something. So, you know, but those things were several thousand. Um, but then we changed again and went to a format still tape based called mini DV. I don't know if y'all ever missed one of those. You might have some of the early camcorders hanging out at your place. Your parents might have, still have it or something. Yeah. But it's an itty bitty little tape, which yeah. was kind of cool. And you I've could. Seen them anyway. Yeah, and they were made so it was digital video. And instead of recording it the same way that uh, VHS and Beta and those kind of tape-based ones were recorded with helical scan lines, I know this is like whatever, um, old technology that's like, doesn't really matter if you know about it or not. And the new stuff was replaced with coding, like zeros and ones literally were building your image on this uh, tape. It could, it kept all the information that was essentially the picture, but digitized it into zeros and ones on this tape. Uh, bad thing, and it was cool, you could uh, capture the, it was called capturing, you put it in the, in a deck or leave it in the camera and use a fire wire, sort of the same thing of a USB cable or something, but it was made specifically for video and media data. And you would uh, capture tape after tape and your editor or Final Cut Pro and even Premiere would digitize your footage. And then you'd store it in folders or bins and all that kind of stuff. And, a little bit like today, but it just did more to the process of it, and you'd have to wait for it to capture that tape in real time. Most tapes, if you filled it up, you might have about 50 minutes, something like that, and it would take exactly 50 minutes for it to capture all that stuff. You call it logging and capturing, because you're giving it a title, like whatever this footage is, and then you're actually capturing it onto your computer. You know, Those terms are gone. <laughs> But it was that transition era. So we used that for a while. Uh, Mini DV was around for a while. And then um, all of a sudden, you had people shooting on these things. You know, and even this, this is an earlier DSLR, but you know, digital single lens reflex cameras. And it sort of changed the game. You could put everything on tiny little SD cards, or in this case, a CF card, compact flash. And <clears throat> And it became really easy. Capturing kind of turned into, well, I'm just transferring footage off this card onto the computer, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. Sticking it where I want. I don't even need to use an editor to do it. I just copy it like regular file copying and stuff. And yeah. And uh, it kind of changed the game. And still today, no matter what, if you're using something uber professional to more prosumer or consumer, it's all kind of recorded in that same way, using some sort of data card, you know, an SD card or um, in upper uh, higher cameras airflex has got their own thing they capture it on usually it's a version of an ssd drive or something like that uh, my black magic uses ssd cards which are big giant kind of things uh <clears throat> red has its own kind of similar kind of card you would use for it you know um and stuff so that's been kind of interesting what i've liked about technology and I'm, i know i'm going on way too long is uh, that it's become easier to use, more readily available for people. I think it gives a chance for people, including myself, who don't have a lot of money, but if you can get a little bit of gear and you've got good ideas, you can make something that can stand out. I firmly believe that. You know, you just can. If you got It all comes down to having a really good story, things lining up in the right way when you make it and edit it. The right people got to see it, but I still think it comes down to those things. And it takes away some of the barriers that filmmakers or people that never thought they were filmmakers but are that were in the way before. You know, like I was shooting on 16, even a short little 10 minute piece would cost me just in like processing and developing the film and getting it transferred to tape would cost me like $1,200, $1,100, which I didn't have back mm -hmm. then. 
I was at the age that I was getting credit card offers, so I used those, <laughs> which I don't condone or advise doing. Credit card debt sucks, and I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm sunk in the hole. One day I'll climb out, you know, hopefully for a film. It's this weird kind of thing. Anyway, mm. <laughs> that's enough for me. Um, what are some of y'all's experiences maybe with that kind of technology? What was laying around the house when you were younger? You know, what did you see? Yeah. Uh, I just used, actually, Talking about some of the technology, just to start out with, uh, when I was probably in my teens, when I got in my teens, um, I started a. Uh, this is really old school stuff, but I mean, of my v the VCR in general uh, that we had as a family in a family VCR, it's the only one we had, and uh, I would use that. I mean, I, I love to take TV shows. Like, right. You can tell when I've talked about TV shows a lot of it. I like to take take TV shows and pause out the commercials. Right. Mm -hmm. During that time. Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, a lot of people did a lot more stuff. Well, I've heard that like they did. Sure. You get two VCRs. They had TV. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. They had two VCRs <laughs> and they did this. I'm like, I didn't have that <laughs> ability but to do that. But um, I was I would pause out commercials. I would you know um, tape. You know, like I said, I have, I have a lot of stuff taped that just you know, like I said, full episodes of of shows. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, the commercials. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but no. I try to do, I try to set it up to where, you know, the next episode or whatever would be set up to go right into it. Well, you were, you didn't call it that, yeah. but you were editing. Yeah. Honestly, you I were finding, when you, you were, were trying to make about a cut. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> didn't they, how did you, didn't, didn't, couldn't you used to have the VHS's tape and then record what was on the TV? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's I what I'm saying. I don't understand yeah. why they don't do that anymore. Well, there was replaced with TiVo. And then that just kind of streamed well, everything. You, you streaming could fast forward through apps. commercials a lot quicker yeah. on the, the TV than yeah. you could on a v, VHS tape. How did you? Yeah. I used to try to do that when I was younger. How did you go about doing that? You just start uh, mm -hmm. like you just get it on your channel, whatever it is, and then uh, we just uh, it does all manually. You have to do uh, uh, you know yeah. record, start recording your television program when it comes mm -hmm. on. It would record it, and then just put press pause when you go to the commercial one and mm -hmm. have it paused wait till the commercial's over unpause it and it'll record they still have those. you have VC, v, uh, VCRs it was a VCR right yeah, yeah it was just regular VCR uh, TiVo's would do it more digitally and some of those I think they got to the point where it would automatically it knew when a commercial was so it would pull it out I can't yeah. remember though I mean I never got to use that I, I mean I just had I watched stuff on DVR stuff that's DVR now. I don't, I don't know about TV as much. I'm not. Oh, it's the same I mean, thing. DVR. Yeah. I, I wrote TiVo and yeah. DVR and the same kind of thing. But but it, but it's, I find it faster to fast forward the commercials on DVR than I did VHS. If you had right. commercials on VHS, like if you could tape a show right. and it had commercials on it or whatever, and you want to go through the commercials, it, it'd be like your fast forward though? one. Because wouldn't they consider it? Oh, in well, a way, yeah. 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 In yeah. a way, yeah. But at the same time, too, movies it, could be on, and you could take a movie and just totally have a movie and didn't pay for it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, people yeah, did people that. Did that. Oh, yeah. People did that. Sure. You know, what I mean, Duke basketball games. It, my grandpa recorded. <laughs> they it used, just oh, wasn't. Yeah. It just wasn't. I mean, it was against the law because they had that federal thing right. at the very front of the movies. They don't have them anymore. I noticed that they don't. Have, I mean, it's. Not as much because no, it's all streaming, yeah. so it's just yeah. like. Yeah. But uh, they have a, used to have it on uh, <laughs> like if you problem. got a VHS tape of a movie, they'd have a, a federal thing at the yeah. first of it saying you can't be copyright, you know, it's copyright and all that stuff. You can't do it, but of course people would do it and put it on another tape or whatever. But it wasn't, it wasn't as enforced enforcement of it like anything you have they could say oh it's against the law but if they don't enforce it then people are still going to do it you know that's yeah. the problem today yeah. yeah and uh but but at the time they, this was still somewhat newer technology too that people didn't think about that kind of stuff as much as television goes i didn't sell it anything i just recorded it right. unpause it pause it you know whatever i did I didn't sell it or anything like that. I just had it for, uh, you know, I threw it in a tape and then wanted to watch a program, you know, a couple of you know, programs and I didn't have to worry about fast forwarding the commercials. 99.9% of people just did that. Yeah. Just because I mean, they'd missed the show, so mm -hmm. they'd set up the, right. you can time those things too. Yeah, but. you get but, commercials. But yeah, you yeah. if you, you, if you record it, yeah, if you set it up to record, you'd have to do the commercials and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. Uh, it'd have to be manually you'd record it to get other like, commercials out of it. I remember a funny commercial from the 80s, totally dated, and it was uh, 
was a commercial for uh, I think L.A. Law, and it was this guy who's a bum. He's like lost everything, and this guy was talking to him. Well, you were a lawyer. You had all this stuff going for you, yeah. but he's like, they wanted me to work when <laughs> L.A. Law was playing. He's like, why didn't you just record it on your VCR? And that was the end of the commercial, but it was just kind of like you saw the guy's face fall. <laughs> wow. But you know, but, it was, it was but, funny. I mean, uh, I, like I said, you talking about that technology just reminded me. I was kind of editing during that time, you know, when I was... It's the same thinking process. I, yeah, I was when just, you know, pausing the commercials, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. that, and it was just a simple thing. Didn't think about that then, you know, right. at the time. Um, well, to coin the phrase from Walter Murch, you're cutting out the bad bits. Yeah. You know? I was doing that when I was about eight years old, um, tampering with VHS tapes. Except with the VHS tape, I would take a little piece of paper. I don't know if you know about it, but if you take a piece of paper and a little square box in the corner, you could record over stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I there, was there, doing it all the time. Yeah. 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 There's, there's, yeah, if you had, were you talking about like movies? Or yeah, on regular movies. Yeah. Um, on regular movies, since I didn't have like a regular uh, tape, playing mm -hmm. like tape, mm -hmm. I would take uh, my mama's cartoon movies that she would get me for Christmas mm -hmm. and I would put the little blank little yeah. piece of paper on the side and put it in VCR and I record my shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that that, that was uh, a, that, that, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff yeah. you could do with a VH yeah, that, yeah. that people really didn't, you know, some people knew, but yeah. some people didn't, a lot of the general public didn't really know how to, what to do. I learned some stuff from a guy who I worked with at a video store when I used to work at a video store because he used to, he used to fix the tapes if something broke or whatever, or, you know, the film yeah, broke yeah. and the tape or whatever, he would fix the tapes at the video store. He, he didn't, he didn't own the store or anything like that, but he, he, you know, they let, you know, they paid him to do that too. To, he worked in the store too, but he, he did that too, where he would just like have to, if, because, you know, after a while, those things would break or, you know, get yeah, really yeah. bad or whatever type thing. And so he basically, he edited that thing to a point because he, uh, he, you know, he had to splice out some of the tape or whatever type thing. Yeah, and, if it gets and eight in fix the VCR. It. But the thing about it is it, it still, you show it, you show up on the things yeah. looking, you know, bad or whatever, but yeah. it's only for like a, you know, a second or whatever type thing. Then he, you know, it'd be regular movie or whatever, but it just, you know, it wouldn't be the perfect, a perfect copy or anything like that. But, um, but it was kind of, I mean, it was kind of funny. He, he showed me a few things, things that he would do or whatever. And cause you could find, you could figure out, uh, if something's wrong with the, uh, cause Sometimes the tape would get, I don't know if uh, y'all, you remember, uh, the, it, sometimes they get stiff. It's like the rolling thing and all that stuff for the tape would yeah. get stiff or not work it right. Move. Yeah, and, and it, oh, it, it and it mess up, in, in the VCR looked like, I'm not sure if it, if, it, if it got old enough, I know we're going, I'm going with old technology here, but um, if you get, uh, it gets rolling. Uh, uh, it, it would get stuck in your VCR on the the um, reels in the VCR, and if you had to be really careful to pull it out and see if you could get it off the reels or whatever, because the, the tape inside would be yeah. off out of the out of the container yeah, or whatever. Trying to wind it up, and mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. the tape would get caught. So what we would yeah. do is, if it gets caught, we take some scissors, cut it out. And uh, my and mother showed me how to do it, yeah. put some tape on it, tape it back yeah. in and put it back in the that's what That's basically what he did, some of that stuff, yeah. You could do the same with audio cassettes, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah, similar, yeah. similar you know, technology, mm -hmm. similar. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it just, it was just, um, sometimes I could get the the reel or whatever out of the thing without breaking or whatever type thing. Yeah. And so I would just, you know, like you said, just pop open that thing, because you use a pen, if you get a pen, and you just roll uh, roll the things or whatever type. Of, you could get a pen and stick in that little hole in the tape or whatever. Yeah, and try and, to wind, and it, wind it, 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 tighten it back yeah, up. Yeah, tighten it back up. You could do that. Yeah. I used to do that with our VHS tapes if something messed up or whatever, because yeah. I learned it from him or whatever. Because my mom and dad would be watching the t video tape or something like that. I'd be like, he messed up or whatever, and I just grab it out of the thing and <laughs> and roll round it back up or whatever. And, I'm not fixing it. I'm not doing anything special or whatever. I'm just winding but it back up. But you'd be a hero to them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it wouldn't mess up the tape itself either, you know, right. if you did it that way. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's, uh, um, that, that was the funny thing about it. But I mean, that's what, you know, like I said, it was kind of an early editing thing. And again, here, uh, when I started editing here, of course, that was a whole different technology yeah. here. <laughs> and uh, I've really, you know, learned a lot with the, edit, the editing, you know, 
Any of y'all ever had a VHS uh, camcorder? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's my, what my uh, birth was on. Yeah, my um, <laughs> yeah, my mother had one, and um, as as we were talking about uh, tapes and everything, I would take the tape. After, I would take different tapes and I would put it in the uh, camcorder mm -hmm. and I will go around uh, playing and pausing certain things and playing and pausing mm -hmm. uh, with uh, my sisters and everything in the house. I would play certain things and I'll, I'll role play with them and I'll be like, hey, stop. And then I'll pause, I'll like cut and do it again mm -hmm. like I was a little movie maker. Well, I was mm -hmm. doing that when I was about maybe eight or nine on the first video if, camera my mother had. If we would have had a had a camera like that, I'd probably be doing something similar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I never had a camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think it was a Panasonic. That thing was like this big. It was huge. Yeah, it was huge. It was nice though. It was an expensive camera. Yeah. The yeah. early ones actually were in two parts. You'd have the camera bit, and then you'd have this cable that would go out to like another thing that would be kind of like a VCR, yeah. but it was like it would hold the tape. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, no, they were bigger. They were huge. I know you're yeah, about. it was just like really it was bizarre that, but looking. It was a big camcorder. Yeah. It oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't. We didn't own one, but we had a friend of the family's that let me keep one for several months just to play around with. And me and my, still my best friend from high school, Jason Ledford, we got together and did a whole bunch of inappropriate uh, videos <laughs> together, <laughs> just like we having really fun. Really want to? I don't know. Like you know, one of the less inappropriate ones was uh, it was we had this character named Mr. Football Head, and I'd get my jacket, I put it over my head, and I'd stick a football on top of. <laughs> Put glasses on it. And then we'd just say stupid stuff. And, it's like Adam yeah. Sandler was saying, I'll do that. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> that Made kind up of costumes thing. or whatever. Hell yeah. Like. <laughs> it was that kind of stuff. And, and some was in poor taste, you know. But like, <laughs> as high school people can be. <laughs> um, but we didn't necessarily have ways to edit, but we still, actually, probably the very first movie I ever took place in. And actually, he was, it was during that time, but it was a class, it was a Spanish class. And our teacher wanted us to do a, a scene or a movie, and as long as we <laughs> spoke in Spanish, whatever we did was fine. So we did something kind of crazy like The Godfather or something. It was a deal gone wrong, and I remember having fun with that. You know, We had a few different shots we used and kind of cut it the best we could. I think most of it was kind of all in one kind of thing you know it's all clunky all done on one tape with one camera kind of stuff so you, you're shooting for the edit if you ever yeah. done that and how difficult like doing that could be you know um but it's fun we showed it in class and everything like that i remember i got i wore like a trench coat and got the dye like i just sort of did this dramatic death scene mm -hmm. at the card table i don't really remember what it was about <laughs> it was just in spanish i'm sure it's awful but you know i wonder if it still exists it's still around i don't know i might have the tape somewhere we got Fine. we got like a wall of vhs tapes funny enough at my parents house so it could be yeah. it could be my parents still, or my dad still has the tapes <laughs> the yeah. of movies or whatever they still have i still, like i said i have seat i have some stuff that I've taped off of. Right. Of and, you know, you could you could get up to maybe 12 hours of stuff on a tape if you did, uh, what, like... Yeah, uh, I mean, like, that's another thing, too. SP or, uh, yeah. yeah, I forget the different... SLP. SLP, yeah. 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 If you did, that's super, well, or whatever. Uh, super slow, slow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'd be a little less quality. Yeah, yeah. Because you say less, but, I mean, less tape. But, you know, you it's going to be less anyway because you're taping off of a television, you know, television, mm -hmm. too, at the time, because mm -hmm. this is before digital mm -hmm. and everything. Too. Right, and you just want to see the show. Yeah, this is, could be digital or cable, or it could be even an antenna, depending on the situation. Right, um, I don't miss antennas. Yeah, <laughs> no, me neither. And uh, well, I mean, when we grew, up, when I grew up, again, well, I, talk, I guess it's technology yeah, too. Um, but when I we grew up, uh, my dad was is technology, or he's fix, you know, he can fix things or whatever. He's uh, electrical type person or whatever. He knows how to fix things. And he, uh, he, he, we had an antenna, outside antenna for our house, and um, he had put a booster on, and we could get channels. I mean, we could, it just the channels better. I should say that. Well, well, we had a thing that we a little dial. I'm not sure if Jesse remembers this or anybody. Did it else. click? It'd like click, yeah. click, click, yeah. click, 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 click. That was click, our, click. that was our first, yeah. that was our first one. <laughs> but then we had one that was. Uh, okay. And just like, but it would still be like real slow. It, it's still clicking. It would be just like, <laughs> and uh, be about as slow as the other one. But um, 
But yeah, the click, 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 I remember that one. <laughs> and you just like outside the tent would just turn to the channel or mm -hmm. the area where you need to get out of the channel. Right. That was the old, very old school stuff. Oh, um, yeah. um, but uh, that's without, ca when you're not, you didn't have cable when you were growing up. Did you ever put a tinfoil um, on your rabbit ears? No, because we didn't really have a lot of rabbit ears. I don't remember those days. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people did that, but we didn't. Uh, but but my dad would have put a booster on our antenna, right. so it got our uh, like the independent stations were sometimes hard to get in because they right. were UHF. They were not um, yeah. the regular. They were UHF. So, mm -hmm. but they or they came in pretty clear uh, when R and R because of that booster or whatever type thing. Right. And then you know I had the regular local channels too, whatever. But that's all we have is three, three, three local channels: PBS and those two uh, independent stations. But right. uh, we, but we came got we got all the stations pretty clear of yeah. where I was living. In Lucky. Anyway. <laughs> um, Half of ours were sideways usually. <laughs> but uh, still watch. And that's that's why the st other stuff I taped is still looks good and yeah. it didn't look. It doesn't look cable, you know, as much right. as like what it would look at on cable, but it sure. still has a good picture to it. Oh, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, oh, yeah. sorry to go. Oh, oh, I just remember like watching tapes a whole bunch, and uh, if you, you could tell if something's been watched a lot because the quality, you know, a lot more tracking would happen, you know. So Especially when you rent stuff, like certain spots of certain movies, <laughs> it would just be really awful tracking there. Generally involved seeing something maybe you're not supposed to see, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just kind of fun. I think one of the half the reasons why um, you don't see, I feel like rentals suck like on DVD is because when people watch it, it gets ruined sometimes. Oh, and the kids mm -hmm. put jelly on it. And, yeah, you'll you know, see like chocolate. I've had movies where I got chocolate on my stuff. I'm like, yeah. ew. <laughs> and you know people are gross. They'll probably do nasty stuff and touch it because other people touch it. Uh, yeah. I, I just know it. I've been in these situations. I know. I know. <laughs> and um, my biggest fear is that. But also, like, um, I just feel like that's the only time I really do appreciate being able to go on my TV and just get a movie. I know it's going to work unless it's my internet or my TV's messed up. And you're not going to catch some funky disease from it either. Exactly. Well, I, you're right. I appreciate, though, used DVDs a lot more than I do used VHS. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. use VHS yeah. is exactly like he was uh, like uh, Jesse was talking about how you could tell when something's been watched a lot or whatever type thing and you'd have a lot of tracking problems and all this other stuff with it. Oh, yeah. And but the D use DVDs, there's better chance. I mean, I, yeah, there's mm -hmm. there's people that will yeah, sure, right, too. crappy. You know, put really they could be just as crappy as <laughs> to be they just man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you could just you know it could just be just as bad as that, um, but but it you have a better chance I guess. Mm. Mm. It's not a hundred percent, but it's not you know. And you can wipe down a DVD it, and yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. You can kind of <laughs> so you know I I feel like you know if I get you know if I'm getting out of use DVD I can got a chance better chance of it right. being a clear you know a decent one. Just watch out for the scratches and. Yeah. Them, yeah. But uh, I never, I never really got many used VHSs because I like I saw, I saw that stuff in the video store and yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah. no, I'm not getting a used VHS. I'm not wasting my money doing yeah. that. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, so after that, after I worked there or whatever, I didn't get any used DVD. I mean, used VHSs right. or whatever. But then when DVDs came out eventually, then oh, yeah. I was like, well, okay, this is just basically. You know, they people will probably mess them up, but like you were talking about, but um, like I said, you saw a lot of crap that I don't you know, didn't see as much as a different oh, yeah. um, thing as much as the DVDs go. Um, but um, but I'd be willing to get a used DVD more than I would be a used VHS. That's just I thought DVDs were a godsend. You know, like mm -hmm. I kind of felt the same way about CDs. <laughs> I thought, wow, yeah. this is the future. You know, <laughs> <laughs> which it is. Sure. It was. <laughs> And uh, DVDs, I remember getting my first DVD player, and they'd been out a while, but you know, I finally yeah. was able to get one, and a movie I'd never seen before, and generally, you know, you kind of want to get something you can, mm -hmm. but I got Pitch Black, which, love it or hate it or whatever, I really liked it. I thought it was a really cool movie, you know, for the first one to, to get a DVD of, and then I got tons of DVDs since then, and, you know, yeah, became I mean, kind of a file. I was, a, you know, kind of the same thing, too. Uh, I had gotten a 
DVD player, but it, it was a DVD player and a VHS player. But it was one of those earlier ones that if one thing broke, the other one didn't work. Because I think my V one of the, I can't remember now what happened. I only had it for like a year, maybe a year. And one of the, the either VA, a VCR broke or the VHS or the DVD broke, player broke. And I couldn't use the other one. So it was pretty much <laughs> nothing I couldn't use on it. Right. What so, do y'all think about the transition from everything from, we went from VHS to DVD and now we're at, you know, everything is digital, digital. Mm -hmm. streaming yeah. now. There's Blu-ray, which I kind of like, but oh, yeah. they're they going to have to... They're phasing that out, though. Yeah. Everything streaming TV. And then 4K is going to be pushed pretty hard. Yeah, because they're not pushing up. the 4K. I haven't, I haven't watched anything 4K or whatever other stuff like that. I have mm. not. I've just seen some footage. I've never seen it on a 4K monitor, though. So yeah. <laughs> And I got a 4K camera. That's the thing about it. Yeah, that's, you know. you know, that's the thing about it. It's I mean, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like getting a DVD on a Blu-ray player or whatever. If yeah. if it's or or watching a Blu-ray on a older TV or whatever type thing. Oh yeah, it, just the like, quality. Yeah, yeah, you don't know what's sure. going on. You know, you don't know. Right, you need uh, an, at least a 720 or 1080 yeah. TV. Yeah, mm -hmm. to to get it. Yeah. But yeah, you know, so but I mean, I've not seen. You know, I haven't literally delved into 4K or whatever because I really haven't been paying attention to that kind of stuff because. Nah, and when I wait for stuff like 4K, like, you know, I kind of maybe spent a little too much on my 1080 TV. And at the time, it was just under a grand. I just gotten a new job. I'm like, I'm buying a TV because <laughs> I got a job. Yeah. And so I did that, and I still got it. It's probably, gosh, it's going on 13 years old, but well, it still looks great. Well, it's, a, it's a <laughs> Sony Bravia, which the Bravia line is really good. Yeah. And it's, How big is it? Uh, 40, it's either 42 or 48, I can't remember, but decent size, and uh, it's great. That was when those TVs were still made of glass and not the little projection glass LCD panels that we have now. It was, it's an LCD, um, it was LCD, it wasn't plasma. Uh, yeah. You know, it was an early, and, but early LCD was pretty good. Yeah. You know, it was pretty decent. They're good now. They just break so easy now. Though. They make them so cheap. Yeah, they Vizio, so cheap. man. Yeah. Some Vizios are great. Some not so great. I love mine. I went to um, 62. 60. Yeah, 62. Inch. Nice. I, I, I saw a credit card. <laughs> First credit card I ever had. It was Best Buy, and I still haven't even paid that thing off. That was four years ago. I know ago. you're paying. I know you're paying. <laughs> Never even made, made a payment. But, but maybe they'll go, out, they'll go out of business soon, so they'll <laughs> yeah, right, go out to so work. Who cares now at this point? But yeah, I the only thing I don't like about it, it's too, it's too big. It's literally, um, and I never thought I'd say that, but it's too big because I can't, I, I have it on my dresser, uh -huh. I can't find anything. That could be right. 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 You need a living room to put that thing. I have, I'm in. A, I am in a living room. Oh well. Yeah. I have. A, I have. Big, I, I'm, I'm in a huge room. My room. My live. My bedroom is bigger than this room. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. Wow. Yeah, it's a pretty big room. I mean, I guess if, yeah, I mean, it's a long room too. Right. It's not as wide. I, no, it's wide. It's the same. It's bigger yeah. than this. Yeah. Wow. But um, so it's a pretty big room, which is why I was able to get it. So I've got you know. I just cannot seem to find anything. But I love my TV. The only thing is, is that the quality could be, be better. Like, I'd much rather have a smaller TV just to have better quality. Just a sharper image. Yeah, What's it's the, not super yeah. sharp. It's good. What's right. the brand? It's, um, Vizio. Vizio. It was $900. It was on sale. One of the better ones. Yeah, it's not horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew it wasn't like it was the worst of the worst. Right. I'm not going to get a crappy TV. I mean, right. it was freaking $900. Was that sure. is a decent, or I'm taking it back. Well, you get it in your movies. K, it was the yeah, 4K? exactly. Is it a 4K TV? Oh, hell TV? no. I couldn't afford that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not 4K. 4K. And it's, it's, a, it's, um, it's a smart TV. No, I don't know. I use my flute, my the PS3, book. so it's like, I forget that if, if it was, no, it is smart, it is smart, because I forget. So you bring up the apps on it. Yeah, I have apps on it. I was about to say, I do voodoo through it. Right. <laughs> I forget. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's nice, it's just too big, it's, it's, a, it's a big man, it's a big man, it's, it couldn't be a girl. 
through the sex and say, what's that, a big man? Mm-hmm. Or it's a yeah. big woman. Yeah. I got the high sense 4K TV. I hit it for almost two years now. It is excellent. The quality, the colors, everything is perfect. Nice. What's and the it, brand on that? Uh, high sense. It's okay. on, it was only $400. That's, That's not bad. It was at Walmart. I got it on sale uh, maybe early February last mm-hmm. year. March of last year. Okay. Yeah. How big is it? Hold on, no, I take that back. I'm lying. The, I bought it from a guy off offer up. I bought two of them. I bought a 40 inch and I bought a 50 inch. Um, I gave the 40 inch to my mom and I had the 50 inch 4K TV. And he said he got them um, on sale, but I bought both from $500. So nice. Actually, a deal. That's a really yeah, good deal. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually a good deal. But yeah, I've had it for almost two years now. It's excellent. Wow. You just bought it off a guy? Mm hmm. Yeah, off, offer up. Two of them. Uh, one was a 1080 Smart 40 inch. Gave it to my mom, and I took the 4K 50 inch, and he like, sold them both to me for 500 dollars on the spot. Nice. And he said he had got them. He said he had got them both for like maybe 800 together. Mm-hmm. So cool. I saved 300 dollars really. Uh, and yeah. That same TV in general was 400 dollars. Well, he didn't really profit from it. Jeez. Yeah. Well, he he said he was trying, to, he was moving, and he didn't want them. No oh, so it's yeah. one of those great situations yeah. where he's like, I he know was, you can't afford eight hundred dollars or more. Yeah, he was Just moving take. out of his apartment and everything. I had went to his house, and he was moving out. There you everything. go. He was like, I'm just trying to. He get He must have money guys. too. Yeah, like, he must have. He I said he had a good job. I've had need recently to have two living room TVs because. Me and my wife both like to play video games, and well, you know, we trade time off, so it's like I'd like yeah. to play. <laughs> you know, um, it's you exciting on? though. Uh, what am I playing now? Yeah, what's your game? System it's boring. Uh, well, I got a 360 and a PS3, but what I'm thinking is that we might pawn those and get it. The new system's are only 200 bucks, so we either oh, yeah, get a, we're either going to get an Xbox One, which we'll probably get because we just like Xbox, mm. and we've been paying the gold thing forever, so. Might as well. Yeah, I'm not or yeah. PS4, which yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence myself because both have a lot of games I like. Mm. And I've heard actually more from the PS4 camp to get one. And here we are. It's a filmmaking podcast, but mm. I don't know. It's still related. Mm. You know, it's where I watch all, it's how I watch all of my movies mm. and everything. Have any of y'all tried PS4 Pro? I have played it. It's supposed to do like 4K and everything. Right, I thought they were both four, or maybe yeah, not. I think it's it's either four point PS4, four point five, or Pro. Right. I haven't tried it. I haven't played it yet. I right. don't see the difference. I don't even attention yeah. span for video games. Yeah, I don't. I don't I play them either. either. My cousin, he's crazy. Over I'm very cyclical with them. Um, yeah. Lately, it's like. If the game has got a good enough story, that compels me to play. You know, it just sort of depends yeah. on that. You know, there is you white to They're making fun of it now on like South Park, which I don't know if you've seen the latest episode. It's pretty good, but they're totally making fun of people playing Red Dead Redemption too. <laughs> like everybody's doing that, not really doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's kind of funny. Oh, I just, I mean, I didn't. Uh... I'm just not in the video games. My roommate I had in mili- when I was in the military, he loved video games. He watched YouTube videos about video games, and he'd get on and have mm-hmm. he had like four or five different systems. And uh, and this is a 19 year old kid, but uh, and he um, he would uh, he would, but there, there was a video game. I just sat down and watched. While, while he was doing it, I watched what he, what the video game was going to be about, and all it was was a guy with a big sledgehammer, the sledgehammer. Rick and Ralph. No, it was just I, it wasn't. It was like a I don't know. I think it was a low end video game or something like that. Because all the guy was, was a had a huge sledgehammer, and he would just go around beating stuff or whatever down. And I'm like, there's nothing more to was the it story. Was it cartoon looking thing? No, it was. This was a really this, realistic. Yeah, one. some other realistic. You yeah, know, for a video game. Yeah, was it realistic. Elder Scrolls, like an early one where there's not a lot going I on? Know, I don't know. It wasn't a lot going on in the, in the story was it itself. Medieval it was, or like fantasy kind of thing. Or? It was fantasy, but it was just like a guy with a big sledgehammer going around and hitting stuff, and I'm like, it sounds like that it could have been the, an early the, Elder Scrolls game or something. I don't, I don't, I don't remember the name of it. Virtual but. reality games. They're scary. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, I had a hard time with it because my friend has a VR and he has the nicest one you can get on the market. 
Is it the Samsung with the phone, or is it the Couldn't one with PS4? It's no, probably the PS4. Yeah, it's the PS4. About. And now he has. A, yeah. He had, I mean, he's got money, so he's got the nicest one you can buy. Yeah. It's brand new too, and he had a haunted one. It's like a yeah. horror one that I did. I know. Oh my god! I couldn't go in the house. There's like you walk, mm -hmm. and then, first of all, it gives you like all these. It feel. It makes you feel like you're right there with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, yeah. But my thing was is like I didn't like it because I kept hitting things. I hurt my hand at one point because of their. I almost yeah. broke his TV too, and he was like, "All right, I think you should stop." <laughs> like, you're right, because I was scared. Yeah. Like, it was different than just playing and right, visually right. seeing it, because you really did feel like you were there. And I remember that you had to walk into this house and never got in the house. Mm -hmm. I stood there, and there was a crow right there going rah. rah. <laughs> and my friends was like, you "Guys, I can't do this," and I couldn't see them, and I kept kind of like, I, and they were like, "You're such a pussy." I was like, "I am. I, I am. I'll take it. I'm not doing it." I was playing. I was playing one of those VR games on the PS4. And uh, it was some haunted house one, and this this monster or whatever you call it just jumped out right at me. Man, I took that damn thing and I slung it across the room my whole way. He was like, "Man, if you don't stop, you gonna break my stuff." Oh, yeah. I mean, it's scary. It's it's but it's fun though. It is it's fun. fun. Like if you get a, there was one that I did though that where you had to break these. Um, it was, it came with the system when they when he bought it, so it was just like mm -hmm. one of those games, you know, like it was fun activity games. There was these things that were like made of glass that would come towards you, and they were different colors, and you and you had a gun, and you would just go like, I think I know the one you're and it was in slow mo. Mm -hmm. It was so yeah. fun, and it wasn't scary. So it was like I could totally like it would come out of nowhere, and it would get faster, so you had to shoot really fast. You have to remember where they come from, so you could go boom, you go boom, and I was that's addicting. Yeah. But it's a headache though. It's the only thing is like it kind of is good though because. You think about it, you could sit there all day yeah. and just play with your hands, but you could not actually all day do VR. There's no possible way. Yeah, you could have a seizure with it too. Um, I've yeah. done some of the Connect yeah. interactive stuff. I've done VR, just like some little basic things where you can look around an environment. Yeah. But the thing where you're moving around a lot, it's kind of cool, but also kind of, it's not there yet. <laughs> I like it. I think but it was kind of cool. I played one of the, it was like a fable one of the fable games they made and a lot of it's like you got to jump and jump, do these yeah, things yeah. And, and that you know it's which if I was younger it probably be a little easier yeah. um, um, but I got a question for y'all uh, what do you think uh, you know we're all kind of cinephiles meaning we like movies and that kind of thing and maybe a little bit into video games uh, some more so than others maybe but uh, do you see storytelling and what is sort of movies for us today slowly melding with things like video games more yeah. and more as we oh, yeah. progress into the future where you could, you know, if you like crime dramas and stuff, well, you could become the detective in this thing. Or you could be a different part. You know, they, 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 they've what? toyed around with that, like, you know, stuff like Westworld is a similar concept. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Red Dead Redemption 2 and Westworld are so much, like, blindingly alike yeah. as far as what yeah. you can do. Yeah. 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 Um, some video games I notice now, like, um, I'm trying to think of the ones, um, they are similar. Like, some of them, have y'all ever seen some games that start off as, like, movies? It, like, it, like tells the story of what you're supposed to do. Yeah, it starts do. off with a lot of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's getting that way. I believe it's really, it's turning into a film. Like, yeah. Well, well you talking about the virtual reality and kind of going that way, but, it, it, it I mean, it... It's a sci-fi show, but a lot of the technology that we have today is came from it too. Star Trek. The the uh, they have a, uh, on Star Trek: Next Generation. They have a holodeck, which was a holographic holographic room that they use with holograms, and they can go do like you said, solve mystery, maybe being a mystery novel or whatever, yeah. or this kind of thing. And they solve the crimes or whatever yeah. type of thing, or you know they do stuff or whatever in the in the room so or they could have you know be on a field somewhere and just be relaxing and enjoying a, a nice day or whatever and uh that's that's like i think that's kind of like the initial stuff of that kind of stuff going on even to a higher degree you know it's, oh, it's yeah. still I mean, but, there yet yeah but, but i think the, we're around the corner from the holodeck yeah because yeah because um, like i said the communicators they had in the original series. I'd rather have this than their communicator. <laughs> is, is that's where cell phone? That's the cell phone they had. You know, early. You know, like I said, that's cell phone. 
a lot of the other technology they took from you know replicators I, I, prints. iPads oh, in yeah. next generation they see them reading if they say they oh, I'm gonna read a, a novel or something like that they're reading on a pot pad mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we have those pads today that you could read you can read a book or whatever oh, yeah. pad or whatever you can or you can do other things but they had it in 2001 they, too yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. this is all and like I said this is all from what 1987 87 is when next generation started oh, so yeah. I mean this is all stuff now that we have today and 60s now. too using a little bit and of the 60s, original show and, 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 and 60s too, too yeah. what but, um, go ahead. I, off kind of off the regular that's right. i want to know everybody's opinion what would you think if they came out with uh if they come if they make a theater they might already have it but they make a theater dedicated to uh, holographic movies what would you think about that like I mean, they come close to it with like IMAX and 3D, but what you're talking about is more like you're. Yeah. It's sort of a cross section between like going to a fun house and seeing a movie, it seems. Because you got to have the space where you can move around maybe yeah. and not get hurt. And they have different things like a big space you can physically walk through. Yeah. Or it's something where. You know, you're in a little pod, and you have a little wheel you can walk on, and you can turn direction and stuff, and it kind of keeps you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? I'm talking about what, like, say if they had, say if, like, like a regular theater, right? but everything was displayed out like a hologram. I think they're going to have that. Yeah. You know, and also what would I you think, think of that? I would like it a lot. It's, I would love that. But more so than just a regular 3D movie. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, more they, so. Everything is kind of that. I think uh, live event concerts are going to go more that way. I think shows in general, there could be a resurgence of going to shows again because of that kind of thing built in. I don't know. Well, they do have some, I, know, I heard about concerts not around here, but like concerts around. They, uh, it's, to me, it's kind of creepy. It can be kind of creepy, but they do well, have people show up. Hologra yeah, hologra oh. they have hologram. Man. Dead uh, singers or whatever yeah. type thing. I was just about to say. And, yeah, yeah. and I don't know. It is super creepy. That I don't know if we're there be, yet. I don't I mean, know if we're there yet for that one. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I agree. It's sort of like, it's like Frankenstein. It's sort of like, yeah. I mean, it's going to happen anyway. Yeah. <laughs> because it's sort of like, here's a red button, don't mm. push it, whatever, you know, right. it's going to happen. They did Michael Jackson, didn't they? Yeah. That so. was yeah. creepy. I was like, wait, I thought he died. Mm -hmm. And There he is. Oh, well, it's yeah. not even I thought he died. I remember thinking, is this old? There's some neat uh, creative stuff, like uh, the, the group, the gorillas, if y'all heard of them. They have these sort of cartoon personas of themselves, and one time, even though they're playing... They have their image, their cartoon versions of themselves on the stage playing, oh, which is pretty cool. Oh, really? mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of their uh, music videos are animations, little cartoons mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they're pretty neat. But they do have a um, y'all know the red cameras, right? Yeah. Well, you know, red camera, they got a phone. Yeah. And uh, the new phone is a holographic phone. It's right. it's a regular screen display, but when you look at it. It's um I seen a sample of it at the um at the AT and T store. When you look at it, it's like the pictures is out of it. Yeah, like, the hydrogen one, the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see it, and it's like um you can see everything popping out at you. It's like three D, but a little bit better. Can you 3D. work with it without? Yeah, and you can record your videos like that. I started to get it just because of that. Sure. But it was like fourteen hundred dollars. And it's the first version too. Wait yeah. for version three or I four. Thought, I thought it was. Because they got was two. they already got some problems with it because yeah, the image yeah, sensor they're using is totally outclassed by anything. Any yeah, film that's I, I out. heard about yeah. that. They said it's not. They said they the videos do do holographic. You can make your own, but people said it's not that good yet. Yeah. So right. maybe because it's maybe the. First. It's the first one. Red's always had that. They're one of the sort of pioneers with technology and stuff. So their first versions. Black Magic to anything like new like that. The first stuff they're going to have is always going to have issues and stuff like. But Red was really trying to put out a camera, affordable seven thousand dollar camera. They haven't been able to do that. Seven thousand. I know, I know. But they haven't. And they were trying to go a little lower, like even three or four, and it, they just couldn't quite put that bang for buck combination together. So then cameras were like the best they could do is like fifteen grand yeah, yeah, and yeah, ten they grand can, they and stuff. Cameras like fifteen thousand, but their cameras yeah. are good. They're good, and and uh, good. Red is known not so much for the pro stuff, but Red is more known as an indie darling kind of camera. 
I want one so bad. They're, they're mm. used, you know, for that kind of stuff. And I got friends that own their own. You know, you can, you know, with the help of a lot of credit cards, oh, <laughs> maybe right. get one or some good gigs. Uh, the professionals are still using. Um, yeah, it's an incredible camera. It's a, you know, Airy Aeroflex. Um, they're using the, uh, what is it? The, not Panaflex. That's still thirty-five millimeter. The, what are they? Oh my God! It's uh, Alexis. Yeah. The Airy Alexa. Yeah, really you know, they have now. that, and the yeah. Amira is a little lower version of that. But the Amiras and the Alexas are really. Really good cameras. They shoot 2K though. Everybody goes on and on about 4K, but these things, like it would, things you see in the movies and all that, a lot of that stuff is shot 2K, on 2K yeah. cameras. But those 2K cameras are great. Yeah. You know the. So what the, is that thing yeah, that yeah. Um, is that a camera crane that that they be having in the Gym, um, sure. on set that. They have all different kinds well, of devices. Crane. They got cranes, and then they've got jibs, and they're similar because it's an arm with a camera on the yeah, end. Yeah, cranes can be everything from you have the operator on the end of the crane with the camera, and yeah. they've had those forever since way back in the day, in the fifties and forties, and or thirties even. Gosh, you know, Rufenstahl used those in Triumph of the Will for the Nazis. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> but still, like they've had gear around like that forever. And jib arms are more like you can operate it from back, and the ones I've used, uh, it's just an arm with counterbalance weight on one side. And you have your camera on a gyroscopic kind of uh, uh, head that it can sit on. And most of those, I'll grab the camera itself and just use operate it from the camera and move it around. You can also have the ones where you That's have like handles on the back end of it, yeah. and they'll have you'll have like a little uh, monitor that that camera's hooked up to, so you can see what you're getting and you control it from the rear. Like a TV studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. They have both. Yeah. You know, they have like little low dollar easy you can kind of carry in a big backpack and take out I, somewhere and then have your I just want to know what is all that stuff they have connected to those cameras it'd be like a million cords all kinds of stuff generally um, right. uh, basic camera packages they're gonna have rails so you can attach stuff to it but you're gonna have battery packs yeah, I see you're gonna have uh, sometimes you're gonna have a hard drive like the like with the uh, Ursa yeah. Mini that we use here yeah. and stuff like that um, you're going to have a monitor. Some you're going to have like maybe even additional like if you're a, a one person kind of one kind of person shooter. You even have additional audio gear like a zoom powered by that battery. So you'll have all these wires yeah. connected and all that kind of stuff. I always was curious. Like, you know, follow focus. Cool. Some are some are automat automated. Um, it's really great. Uh, I don't think y'all have used one, but it's a uh, wireless follow focus. So. I was a seeing on a commercial, and instead of being there with the camera and the operator, the DP, I was by a television, and I'm looking for focus. So I'm turning this little dial and making sure that the object there is, is sharp the whole time. And he's on a handheld, uh, on Steadicam, so it's moving. So I gotta, I just sort of think about the relationship of the distance between camera and the object that needs to be and focus and I just watch it and write it and it's so neat you think it's gonna be hard but it's really it's not so bad you know you kind of figure it out you know and it, it's pretty neat but those are additional wires and stuff that will be on that you know plus you throw a matte box on uh, follow focus and a uh, uh, follow zoom so that's another thing you know so you can also control the zoom <clears throat> I would love to have a personal like AC first AC and um, a follow focus like that yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. having an AC is chip. great an AC will make you look fantastic if they keep you in focus mm -hmm. and sharp it's like what's yeah I know I'm using that? a 75 and we're on a dolly I'm sorry <laughs> what's the AC is that that little box thing AC is a no 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 AC a is a camera member. system crew member and they're going to be, you know, how the follow focus is, they're going to be the one actually on that follow focus. They're going to so be like, the ones out putting tape down for the actors and making the measurements. So the DP doesn't have to worry about that. Um, yeah. Because there's a lot of DPs got to do already. There's a camera operator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some, D, some DPs operate, don't even touch the camera. They'll hang out at Video Village or they'll, they'll be around, but they'll be talking to directors and, and camera crew and gaffer, making sure all that goes. And then you have a camera operator. And... You got a cam operator and an AC. The camera operator just worries about composition, and the AC worries about the zoom and the focus and those maneuvers while that's happening. And then your second AC is uh, going to be using the slate 
and being an extra set of hands for that camera crew, like changing out lenses, getting, uh, taking the card over to, um, hopefully you got a DIT guy or a DIT person on set, and and that and their their job is sometimes a considered part of editing crew, but also part of camera crew. They get the footage and they they go ahead and capture it or transfer it over. Transfer. Oh, Jesse. Oh, thank yeah. God. Ten one hundred, okay. Huh? Ten one hundred. Ten to one hundred. Yeah. Zoom lens. No, I was thinking ten one hundred bathroom. Oh, oh, gotcha. Oh, the call sign. Yes. Yeah, I'm yes. learning all my, my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very what's important. The, very the important. DIT? I was about to say something. Uh, like digital one. intermediate transfer, something like that. But their whole job is just to get that raw footage and get it onto hard drives to capture that. You know, uh, and I believe it's called DIT. I don't know the exact words for yeah, for the le for the letters but uh but something like that i've been doing my research on some cameras but i know um it's this little box zoom um that the televisions news i don't know what it's called it's 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 like this big square thing that they put on cameras but it can it's like it can see everything it can it can pan and see everything without you having to like adjust it like without having to zoom in. Uh, is it like almost a robot camera? Uh, no, it's 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 an additional lens, but it's okay. like a big. It's like in a sh shape of a box, but it connects to a camera. You can even connect it to a regular DSLR. Right, I've seen that before, but in earlier cameras, it was like. I forgot. What there were some cameras that I used back in the day where the lens was fixed, but we could add these other lenses to it by this. It had this box that would clip onto the end, and then it would have another lens you could stick on it. It's probably not what you're talking about. Let <laughs> me but, see. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Only, what does it do? Does it? Uh, only television. Only televisions can use it. Oh, are you talking about the teleprompter that's got the words that come? No, not the teleprompter, but it's it's a thing. It's an additional like a lens that goes on the camera. Uh -huh. that they put on the uh, cameras and uh -huh. it makes every it enhances the picture quality and it, huh. it enhances the width so instead of like 35 it's like 50 millimeters or something like that like oh so. it just um, yeah huh generally uh movie uh tv cameras are equipped with just a really good zoom lens yeah and so generally it's is. just you know whatever camera make they're using the several different companies make studio cameras um, even Black Magic's got their own. Let me see. You know, which do you got a picture of it? Yeah, um, it's this video right here. Do they have a name for it? They call it a gen lock. Oh, no, that's not right. Huh. Let me skip to the video. Yes, yeah, this um uh Digipower seventy two. It's like a lens. Mm -hmm. It's a lens it's an additional lens that goes on the camera. Okay. Um, Huh. Yeah, I don't know that one. I'll have to check it out. It's a lot. Uh, I don't know how it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's alright. It, it's a par focal lens. Okay. That's huh. what it's called. Yeah. I don't really know much about that. I'll have to yeah, do a Google search on it. Yeah, it's for television, it. like TV cameras and stuff. Right. But yeah, I was just thinking about it because I thought that was neat. I had looked up on it a while ago. Huh to check it out. I remember for a while they were doing all kinds of like uh, dual lens 3D cameras and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, but 3D didn't really take off yet again like people were thinking it would. You know, I like 3D but I got some issues with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, especially if it's a bad theater mm -hmm. and they're just sort of half assing yeah. the, the quality of the projection it oh, just is awful. I looked at it like as much as 3D goes. I looked at it as, okay, I never I went, whenever I, growing up Going to movies, going to see movies, even in my you know adulthood to going to movies, and thinking I never came out of a theater saying, you know what that that theater movie would have been so much better in 3D, <laughs> and so I was like I said I took it like that, you know, yeah. just like I went to a couple of 3D movies and right wasn't impressed right so right and it could be maybe the movie wasn't that great right either. it could be conversion yeah. factor well i mean uh, just as much as the 3d goes i mean you know right. i just like it could be the, the 3d conversion wasn't wasn't good enough or right. the you know whatever but i just it just didn't really i mean i could tell it was stuff was going to in certain you know certain areas i saw it was you know going on but it just like wasn't 
Right. It was. It became a fad. Sort yeah, of. Yeah, I think it was just like. I'm so. I'm glad that's kind of kind of got right. one out of the yeah. realm. But um, yeah. I mean, I just like it didn't really do anything for me. But that's just me. Right. I think it's right a three D sort of seemed to be an excuse to like, hey, let's jack up the prices of our tickets and have them watch it that way. Could possibly <laughs> be too. You know, where if you've watched it, it's going to be about fifteen bucks probably on the yeah, low end for I a good three D like kind of thing. And then there's the problem of like, well, some movies were intentionally shot using three D equipment. And then some weren't, and then in the post process they make it 3D. Yeah, it's and a it conversion. Usually you run, yeah, yeah usually you run into some problems with that, especially if the original intention wasn't that. But you're just doing that so you can have you know some mm -hmm. people are going to go to the IMAX theaters and watch it in 3D and, and pay 35 bucks a pop, you know, or something. Yeah, which is ridiculous. To me. It well, is. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I haven't been I to an IMAX theater. Have any, I've yeah. only been to one. I've been to I've been to one Raleigh. I've been to. Is it different? Is it it's just same? huge. Ridiculous uh, is what it is. I saw. Um, <laughs> my thing was the the stuff I saw on IMAX was sort of uh, almost like a novelty. It was uh, not a real movie. It was uh, documentary style. Something documentary or animation. It was one I saw in Vegas. Was this mm. computer three D CGI stuff? And it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. You had to wear, also, the, it was kind of clunky. It was a weird theater, and I, you wear these big kind of almost helmets. Oh, it's kind of yeah, strange. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was a little bit, it's a little bit on your neck, you know, for something. I think it was a 40 minutes to an hour. It was a little much. Gee. Yeah, and then, so. then smaller glasses. Uh, the ones I was kind of glasses. Yeah. It was like a, but the thing I don't like about it is because your neck is like this whole time. Yeah. Because you're, it's and super. And the yeah. yeah, well, from the one I went to, I was like this. I was like, oh my god, this is uncomfortable. So is the screen huge. like huge? I know it's huge. huge. I know it's yeah. super it's huge. Like, wide, like it's from side to side. Hey, that's the thing I don't like. It's too big. It's like almost the whole wall. Oh wow. It's huge. Yeah. It's like yeah. a projector. <laughs> I, I went to one. The only one I went to, I guess, it was up in Boston. I was visiting some friends. They had kids. Uh, it was a couple, and they had a friend, uh, kids or whatever, and we went to this the theater I, I know what you're talking about as much as the the screen goes but for some reason the seats we were sitting in because we set up in kind of like a balcony area or whatever it wasn't that bad to oh, yeah, uh, you're high. Yeah. Right. yeah so as much as that goes it wasn't bad the uh, it, it was gonna it was just a documentary uh, on a um, uh, it was um sea world or something James Cameron it was James Cameron's uh it was James Cameron was doing the documentary on uh the Titanic it wasn't the making uh, of the Titanic oh, but it was the real Titanic right. they were going underneath and looking at the real Titanic I remember when I came out I that, yeah. and uh, yeah uh, I, it, it that was pretty good as much as that goes I mean it I wasn't too that. bad but I, it wasn't something that I was like ah oh, god this is so amazing I wasn't coming out going oh my the god good part of it was the actual story the yeah animation. Yeah, well, actually, I wasn't really interested in that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I just, I sure. didn't like. I mean, I do okay. That's a whole other story. I'm not a big Titanic fan. I, I'm not, that's a whole other story. But, uh, but, uh, um, but the you know with the fish you know swimming around and all that stuff, it's kind of funny to see the kid because they had a couple of kids or at least one of the kids because the other kid wasn't paying attention to anything right. going on. But one of the kids was you know had the we all had glasses on and they and the kid would keep on grabbing you know <laughs> going like that or whatever because you know a bunch of fish you know yeah. running around and all this. so that was pretty cool. Underwater cool. ones are crazy. Yeah. I have to say 3D um, or IMAX whatever 3D. Right. Yeah. Uh, in like water, it, it is fun because we went and saw when we went to it. We went to the one in Raleigh in front of the Marvel Kids Museum, or it's next to it. And God, it was so expensive. <laughs> it was like a ten. It was like a fifteen minute, twenty minute movie though, and it was just underwater, you know, style talking about the ocean type thing. And I was like, this is just. I just feel like I wasted all my money. <laughs> on nothing. I mean, it was cool looking, but yeah. I mean, and I could not watch yeah. a full entire two hour movie of this. Yeah. No, no. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't happen. Yeah, maybe I mean, five minutes. Yeah. I mean, I just, don't, I mean, I just don't really care about Tat the Titanic, and I wasn't really a big fan of that his movie that he did. Either, I'd probably but, appreciate Titanic. I, I am a fan. But um, they rebuilt the ship, you know, or they're working. Yeah, they're working on it. I, I would not get on that ship. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at least not to to go on a boat ride. At least not no. near the Arctic Ocean. Or, or the, I'm not you know, looking to uh, to yeah. You know, that, in this day and age, you don't know where an iceberg is going to be. <laughs> That's well, terrifying. That was terrifying. There's a little less of a chance of being in the tropics than having an iceberg. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, 
where I don't know where they're going to be sh uh, having the ship at. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I just like that story with that stuff and everything. Because they were going through it and they were sharing, well, it could have been this way. And look at this. And it was great. And they were all fascinated by it, but I wasn't really. You know, the, too, the, yeah. the people in the documentary were fascinated by it, but I was just not really thing to me. But, you know, but it, it was a okay K experience, but it was a good experience. But, you know, I didn't. Still getting. I had a model of the Titanic go. when I was a kid, and it didn't it didn't fare well either. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I built it too fast. Yeah, you, 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 structural went, integrity. You was went on a, a snowy day. Uh, you, you you put sailed it on a snowy day, and and then a. Uh, I'm not pond, sure. In, yeah. in a pond, in a cold pond with a, <laughs> and the iceberg came. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember if it you know if that happened or if it, if I you know it met my BB gun. I can't remember. <laughs> so is the image quality about the same in IMAX or? Well, as, here's the as, thing. Here's as, the thing about uh, about image quality. Um, if it was shot on true IMAX film, like 70 millimeter, 65 millimeter, yeah, it's better quality because it's a bigger piece of material that you're capturing that image onto. Mm -hmm. You know, like most movies we see is 35 millimeter film. Well, like twice that size of actual film. So yeah, you're gonna have more uh, more picture detail because it's a bigger it's like having a bigger sensor bigger. in a camera, yeah. you know, it's just sort of that kind of thing. You know, the bigger the well, sensor, the bigger the So y'all was just saying that it's just a bigger screen. It is, and you, but you got more color detail and that kind of stuff in it because it's just bigger. Well, you can fit more. I don't more think it's no further. I don't think they can go no further <laughs> besides the holographic. I think that's the max. Yes, <laughs> it is. I think that's the max. That's the well, best. Right. Before you know it, they're gonna have it to where movies, <laughs> you can like, you know, transport actors <laughs> in yeah. front of you. Yeah. And then how does it happen? Does it happen like the Matrix, where you jack something into <laughs> your skull and have the experience that way in almost a catatonic state? Or is it more like Star Trek? You're an active participant mm -hmm. with these objects that look and feel real. Or you know, somewhere in between. They're just going to stop trying to make things <laughs> better than what they already are. Right. If, you know, the collapse happens, then mm -hmm. we got something else to worry about. I was We're going to go back to performing on stages and, you know, that oh, kind of thing. Oh, it's going to suck, man. <laughs> Wouldn't that just suck? Just the, everything that we've worked <laughs> towards non existent. I, I, right. I looked at, actually, IMAX movies, too. In comparison to 3D movies and all that stuff too, I looked at it as like, okay, if I go see this movie in IMAX or 3D or whatever you want to say it and say love it and love it and think it's great looking and everything like that, I'm never gonna have that experience at home. No. Yeah. So it's just like, there again, you know what? It's right. You'll have it, but not on a smaller TV. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, so you know, I mean, yeah. it's. You know, it's just like, yeah, it looks good on there, but then I get home and it's like, okay, you know, it wasn't as good. Because if it's a spectacle type movie, right. too, that's another sure. thing. If the story's not there, but it's just more it's of a spectacle visual, movie, yeah. It's about the, the novelty so of it. it. Then that's just waste of, you know, money right. right there, or, you know, waste of, you know. Sure. It's like, well, to me. Well, it becomes synonymous with train arriving at a, stage, at a station because it was just about the spectacle yeah. when, was, when the Lumiere yeah. brothers did that. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like Avatar. I know that I'm gonna throw some <laughs> controversy out there. I hated Avatar. I thought it was this is the dumbest story in a movie. I thought right. it was just dumb. Right. People loved it, but then I heard a conversation on a podcast about it. Everybody said, "Oh, it was great. It was beautiful and all this other stuff." And then the person who was arguing with them saying, "I put it on the uh, you know put I was uh, put it on the other day and it I sucked. I didn't like it." And they said. Oh, you should you know you should have gone to the movie uh, to the, to a theater and watched it. Well, wait a minute, wait, hold on a second here. You shouldn't have to you know have it in a theater you know to, to something, like something a movie. Right. You shouldn't have to have you. It should be right. good in the theater. It should be good at home. It, yeah. You know, it's, it's they, different. They, you know, for the longest time they were saying that theaters were going to be non-existent one day. Yeah. Which right. the older I'm getting and the more I see that it matters, I don't think so. Right. I don't think so because. Right. Um, that because they you know they were saying why did they get so expensive all of a sudden out of nowhere which they had always been kind of expensive but not when I was younger it was a little more right. cheaper five bucks man That's yeah it. man it was stupid now it's like an arm and leg but my thing is is 
that's where it started, and I don't think it's gonna end there. I think it's gonna stay there, as more, right. more so what I mean, because you can't, unless they'll revamp a movie theater and make it something different, but kind of the same concept, that's possible, <coughs> maybe, but I don't think they're gonna get rid of movie theaters. I just don't see that anytime mm -hmm. soon. If they do, it's not anytime soon. It not anytime soon, down. yeah. They I mean, might so, cut down, but yeah. I think it's going yeah. nowhere. I'm no. Gonna, I definitely agree with that. I think all, you're gonna see what we're gonna see the same thing happen to vinyl is you're gonna see people that care about it sort of step up and what we might see is more mom and pop movie houses pop up, which I would like to see. That would be awesome. <laughs> which some of those become chains like uh, the uh, Alma Draft House. Like it used to place. be just one in, in Austin, Texas, and then it became a chain. But they do a really good job. They have great food. <laughs> great food and it's all about your movie experience. They're really into that. It's really Is retro. Like a draft. <coughs> it's not a drive-through. It's just a really nice. Uh, it's in Raleigh. They're really nice. Yeah, there's one in Raleigh, and um, one they have showings of. You think eating while you're watching movies is problematic, but no, they got some kind of system there where no one's in your way, no one's making noise. Most places do that. In now, fact, though. they're really good about like shutting down. I hate it when people are on their cell phones and talking. Right. Yeah, check some stuff. That don't bother me. I don't care. But um. You know, people are on them and they're having conversations. Oh, that, yeah, but even checking yeah. them, they are really good about yeah. like none of that, none, nothing happens. I feel like you don't need to come to the theater if you're gonna be doing all this. No, you're just wasting question. your money. Yeah. Stay at home. You know. Yeah. Keep, keep <laughs> you're wasting somebody music. else's money by interrupting yeah. the experience. I hate to even be around somebody and we be in the theaters. I'm like, look, watch the movie. Yeah. Get off that, of this. You know what I mean? That, like, they yeah. think uh, people annoying. think think they're at home. That's why they they do at home when they're watching a movie at home is checking their phone and all that stuff. And that's why right. I have a problem with sometimes going to the theaters. When I was at, uh, watching Halloween, there was this couple sitting next to me. Mm. If their phone was never out, their mouth was. <laughs> the okay. whole time they were talking, I, I was, and she would have a full-on conversation with her boyfriend and laying in, in his lap. Like, I'm like, you guys, can, if you guys live together, uh. you obviously date. So even if you don't live together, you see each other. I don't know who you are, and I'm trying to watch this movie that I just paid fifteen dollars for, okay? And they're right next to me. We're like touching elbows. And you want to say? And you can't be. You know you can't. Because yeah. then they're gonna. Pop it's gonna off get turned you. around on you. Yeah. It is like, well, I paid for this movie and I get to do what I want. Because you, you know, I'm not confrontational at all. But especially if I gotta sit with you for another <laughs> almost hour and a half. Yeah. And you're already five seconds into the movie. Oh God. Just talking the whole. Was movie. it crowded? It was. It was the, like the premiere night of Halloween, the new one. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Well, yeah, normally, I, the, normally those are better nights to go to a theater, believe it or not, to see it because everybody's not seen it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they're not. They're going to be quiet, maybe concentrating more on the movie. Or no, whatever, she didn't care about this movie. Mm -hmm. All she cared about was talking about her friend and how much she didn't like her friend anymore or something. Oh, then like it. I don't uh, like your friend yeah, either. Shut up. I think they would have shut them down at Alamo Draft House. Unless it was at Alamo. No, <laughs> I you know. I've only been to Alamo two times. The reason is because uh, they're they're pretty far from me, but also yeah. they do, they are kind of pricey for me. They're they're expensive. Yeah, yeah. but I do like the experience better than it. I was at Briar Creek. Right. So, um, but Alamo. The thing about Alamo is like when I went it was when I saw that guy from that the 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 documentary thing, which I thought was pretty cool because they'll have people right. there sure. promoting their movies. Yeah. Um, but they're really retro, so retro that it kind of loses me because. Personally, I don't know much about older flicks. Right. Like, um, you'll see, you'll have all these movies you can't put rent or buy or something right. sure. in the middle. And I love the artwork, by the way. The artwork's yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. But it's super. It is super mom and pop. You know what? I you're not. I don't know if you're familiar with Dermot at all. There's a. Um, yeah. There's one. At, I don't know what it's called because I've only been there once. I went and watched Beauty and the Beast there. It's kind of retro, like that's really small. Uh -huh. Like when you walk in, this is like almost the size of the room sure. where you get the popcorn sure. and stuff. Yeah. It's the theater itself kind of sucked though because it, the the chairs were like still bolted to the ground. Right. And it was, like, old style. Oldie, yeah. Very old, but it was really cute and right. petite and small. And I kind of yeah. actually appreciate that more than a theater. It's all fancied out and it's huge. Sounds like a good place to have a screening. Like if you got a movie yeah. or a show. Yeah. You could have like a small low key screening, but get some good input. Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of like my whole thing, but I like Silver Spot also, where you can sit in a recliner in a couch and lay back and spend 
<laughs> a lot of money. My take on that is stay home and do that. <laughs> no, but it's, it's there's, there's, totally different. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if you really need that, I'm, I'm not saying that you need that, but I'm just, I mean, you know, that's a different experience, and that's, it okay. Is. that's okay. But it just, you know, a lot of people, I mean, I've heard people talk about, like you just said, but in a different way of like, Oh yeah, that was good. You know, just hang out and the great they got great chairs on us uh, stuff. I'm like, uh, go stay at home and watch yeah, the movie. Yeah, they don't have a movie at my house that I'm going to go see. <laughs> but wait till it comes out. <laughs> no, see, like, I can't do that. But uh, <laughs> that's I mean, just like I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't be comfortable in a theater. You should be comfortable in a theater because you know you gotta sit there for two, maybe two hour, half an hour, two hours, whichever that may, may be. But there, you know, they. Uh, you should have some decent chairs. You know, you should have sure. just some decent stuff to sit in. But uh, I'm just saying that. Do you <laughs> want people to fall asleep? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's just you know that's just like you know. My girl they're getting the first one to fall asleep. It goes back to my point about people thinking they're in their houses, and and that's when the people start getting out the phones oh, yeah. and all that other stuff. And oh, look, yeah. hey, I'm it relaxing. It feels very and homey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you want to, you could, you you. It's like you just feel like you're in your bed at that point. Yeah. And but I man. like it though because if you're spending a lot of money, like it's like eighteen dollars for a ticket there. Or something of that nature. In Europe, but this is a very fancy, this is like smack dab in the middle of um, Chapel Hill. So it's like, it's really the, the fancy, fancy place. Yeah, yeah. Um, and have you ever been to Silver Spot? Huh? You haven't? It's really good. It's really good. It's nice, but it's just, it's overly expensive. But yeah, right. It's just like, I appreciate the couch thing. You're right. It kind of freaks me out because I am getting, it's not the fact that I'm being comfortable. It's like, who's sitting here? Because it's just really, it's different than a chair. Your whole body's kind of hitting it. It's like, it's the not. The Grand is like that in Greensboro too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, Because I have been to that one, mm -hmm. one time, mm -hmm. a long time ago. It's just, you just feel like you're getting everybody's germ because uh, it's a couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heads. It's an easy chair. Everybody's in a lazy boy. Exactly. <laughs> I've never been to those theaters. I think I would, not freak out, but I mean, I would just feel Grand's weird. Okay. For, Grand's okay. You know, it's a little strange, but I haven't been to a Grand. When I went the last time I went to the Grand was the old school stuff. Right. They, they <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, which was comfortable. Um, was yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's just, I mean, like I said, I don't think you should just sit in the, you know, one of these, you know, hard chairs or whatever. Right. I'm just saying, in a theater. Oh, but, I would die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would die too. Especially yeah, I mean, in that like chair. Said, but oh, yeah. you know, it's just like I just feel like you need to, you know, concentrate on things. And it's like you just said at the Alamo Draft House, which I, know, I haven't been to one, so I can't say anything about it. Right. You said they were a good experience as much as like food goes. And the other theaters have been doing the food sure. thing too. Yeah. And when I've been, I've never been to one. It's great. But when everyone, and I'm thinking, but at the same time too, I've had this right. speculation. Go to a My spec <laughs> is like, yeah, either go to a restaurant or is that, wait a minute, you got people serving the other people in the theater while the freaking movie's on. And I have enough, my, one of my huge pet peeves is the phone. Like he was talking, like you were talking about. Right. Okay, I get pissed off when one, per, one person right. in the theater yeah. looks at a phone, much less being in a theater with everybody eating and these meals and all, and people <laughs> serving stuff and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is not what, what I- You're used uh, to the norm. And yeah. you know what, I get it. But I have not had any problems noticing it because you just, you get out of that. You're thinking it very in a deep way and like you're really used to the, the old timey way, which I agree, I I do agree, but it doesn't bother me. I could I could see how it could bother you, but it does not bother me. I guess because I love the fact that I get to eat me some French fries mm -hmm. and a burger or chicken strips or some tater tots while I watch my movie. And see yourself, their wait staff are like ninjas. You don't they even really know, they're there and gone, and you don't even see them. Or Although it does really upset scary. me when I can't get their attention, because you know everybody's watching a movie. That's the only thing. It's like if I'm. We put the little thing on your, and they should be able to spot it. But yeah, I got it. I they guess. do need to do that where there's like a like a very light there's like where you don't not a light but when there's a, a button I can press where they get like a zzz, you know where they can <laughs> kind of a zzz, or something yeah. like hey I need my drink or I need right. some ketchup or something because right. I'm the first to say I love ketchup <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah I, I get it. I get mm. your logic on it. <laughs> My old timey ways has it not been that long ago? Let me tell you. I know, I'm like, <laughs> How many years now do you think they've been doing the food thing? Gosh, uh, I went when I was in grad school, so at least 20 years. Were they serving food at, at a. Alma Draft House did, yeah. Because I went to um, South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, which 
it was a great film festival well, then, and it's gotten nothing but bigger since then. And what, they had several, multiple venues you watch the stuff at all over the place. Some are like almost a hotel conference room where they got a screen set up. Then others are, most of them are in legit theaters mm -hmm. within walking distance of each other. And it was great. You felt catered to as a film appreciator. Like it was nice to go to a film fest like Khan's. A lot of times filmmaking and stuff is kind of like, well, it's over there, you know, and it's just kind of this weird vagabond kind of section of a convention. Yeah. But at a legit festival, especially a big one, like, it's all about that. Everything is catered to it. On my draft house. So they're probably they, one of the first. Yeah, yeah, and they cater to your viewing experience. They're real serious cool. about that, which cool. is neat. How long has it been in general? Like I said, that was especially one theater. Mm -hmm. How long has it been in general theaters, pretty much around the country, whatever type thing? I would it say only within like the last years. five to eight yeah. years. Yeah. Really. See, my old time yeah. wasting time. I don't remember. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't remember years ago. I know Northgate and Durham because they suck. Right. Don't do it. There's no way. I, I mean, I haven't been there in a while, but some theaters don't do it. Like the lower budget ones, mm -hmm. but the higher ones, especially like in Raleigh and Chapel Hill, you're not going to find really a theater where it doesn't give you food. Oh, Although the Raleigh Grand and uh, Briar Creek, I don't. They do food, light food, right? Not like full on courses like the one I was talking about. Sure. Sure. by but um, but yeah. So there was it, one theater I was going to Williamsburg. It was, Virginia. I, I, was I, yeah, Virginia. Williams, I was in Williamsburg. I don't know what it was. I don't know what what it, I was. I went in there. I was going to go, wanted to go see a movie, mm -hmm. and the per, they were had two people in front, or one person in front of me. They were two both together and they went to the because what it was was it was a, some sort of one of those food ones I, again I don't know what it was because I didn't go that far because they were standing up there going oh what do we eat uh, what are we going to do and I'm like freaking I just want to freaking pay my because you had to pay a ticket there too yeah and I just want a freaking ticket to the thing I don't care about food and all this other crap right there and they were going, oh, oh yeah. and it was just like the, they were taking, now this was the experience of taking at this point out, I hadn't gotten the theater yet. <laughs> and uh, and I'm like, forget about this, and I walked out. I didn't even go, right. if, if it's gonna be that much of a pain just to get <laughs> right. in the freaking theater, I'm done. Mm -hmm. No, I just like, all I wanted to do was watch a movie. I didn't mm -hmm. care about food and all that right. stuff. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you're stuck in your ways. <laughs> no, I, I just it's a theater. It, it's not a it's not a living no, I room. Get it. I people, get it. that's why you you complain about those people talking. That's what they think is is their living room. They talk at that yeah, room no, at, all it, the time. It, it, that's not a living room. That's yeah, not. it depends on the chain. <laughs> I mean, I'll get annoyed if someone's in line talking about some food. I'm like, worry about it later. Let's get our yeah. ticket, okay? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're not. Are you buying? Were they buying the food right then and there? Because that's like yeah. just common courtesy, though. Like people. I don't draft get house ain't like that. You go in, you get your movie ticket, you go there, and then if you want something, they have a little thing where you just put your, mm -hmm. you have a little thing you can fill out and you just stick it there. They come yeah. and grab it like an engine out and then yeah. bring it back. Exactly. Them. Which is so much better. Okay. I just feel like you don't take your time in line. You worry about it outside of the line. Mm -hmm. You're going to take more than yeah, five Yeah, yeah, no, no. If yeah, we could no, have yeah. separate, almost like in, in a sense, in a weird sense, like a drive-in theater, and I'm. Uh, I would love to go, go with me that on this one. Yeah. You're in your own car. Right. And you're you're hearing the movie because I now they have uh, our drive-in theaters now have a, you, on your radio. You right. turn, You tune, tune into in. a to a to a station, and that's what the the, the right. thing is. Right. And. But the old school, when I used to go to it, it was you like a, a speaker the on the thing, and you have to have the door. window open or whatever. <laughs> and, you know. yeah. But usually it was summertime, so you didn't worry about it anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and they have a sticker on a post next to your car or yeah. something like that. It's but like the speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. they used to, and as the speaker wasn't working, or, or it was always... <laughs> yeah. or it it um, didn't work. But anyway. Do they still have driving theaters? There's one, there's one in Eaton. I want to go. I've never been to one. Yeah, they did. There's one in Eaton, a county over. Eaton Drive-In. Is it nice? Mm -hmm. Is it really nice? Uh, I, I haven't been to it in a long while. It wasn't. It was bad when I went to it, but that was a long time. Do they have food there? Huh? They have food, popcorn. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because wow. I can't. You will not yeah. see me go anywhere without popcorn. Yeah. But I mean, if you could have a theater inside theater, similar to a drive-in, where you're in a kind of a pod, 
if right. you will. Or two seating sections. Yeah, something like that. I think and they do you, that at your Alamo own, you know, kind of like I said, almost to a point you're on your own car. Right. And where everybody else is not hearing you do right. that and you're still the theater the movie's still playing like it would be in any right. other point in time. Kind of like a train station. You're all going to the same place. <laughs> We're approaching also like why not stay at home and stream it? <laughs> well, hey, that's what I'm saying. But anyway, but but if you wanted to do if you yeah. wanted to have this whole homey right. thing here you could do then that. That's so that much be... work. I don't know. <laughs> You're not going to see me work. do go into It's the same thing. I don't know. It's just like, okay, I'm like you at this sense with the food. Why? <laughs> Why? It's almost like, you know, it's something like you could call it an experience pod. Maybe you could see yeah. a movie or you could I mean, a game. Or but if it, it, so you could it, basically you could sit there and look at your phone and do all this stuff, but you're sure. not bothering anybody else in the right, theater. Right. You can talk to each other the whole time, and yeah. you're not buying. But then it loses money. the communal. I like the thing. fact that my girlfriend <laughs> found her phone. Yeah, no, <laughs> but it's already it's already done. Uh, yeah, That's, yeah, that communal right thing is already done with people eating and talking and on the phone and all this other stuff. That's all gone now. Yeah, people are so annoying and rude. That's so, gone. You know, oh my God! Do you guys remember the movie that came? Came out um, a couple years ago. It was about the vegetable. I mean, the food that talked. It was kind of um, oh. yeah, older. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sausage, sausage party. Sausage so, sausage so funny. Party. So funny. That is funny. Actually. I went to Northgate I, by myself. No hope for that movie. But so I didn't either, and it was great. Yeah. I watched. I remember I took off work just to go watch that. I did not want to work that day. Everybody I knew was at work, so I went by myself for the first time ever to the movies by myself. It was phenomenal. And there were these people that decided to bring their child in there to watch this movie, thinking oh, it was... It's not a kid it film. It was not a kid film. No. And they knew it. I knew they knew it because you can mm. tell it wasn't a kid film just because it was... And it really pissed me off, not going to lie. Like, yeah. that's another thing to talk about. I hate it when people bring their children. Yes. Like Halloween. To there R was a 10-year-old. rated yeah. There was a 10-year-old in there for Halloween. I was like, what the fuck, man? And you're like, you know, like, your child is innocent. Keep them that way. Okay, because we're, we're we don't. I was never allowed in There's plenty, the, yeah, in the theater yeah. R rated movie or, until I didn't see a R rated movie in a theater. Now I saw some at home, of course, mm -hmm. but in a theater I didn't go to a see a theater until I was a uh, my senior year of high school. Wow, oh. and uh, that was at theater. Now, at least I've seen R rated movies sure. at home. And the other thing, you know, going on. I, anyway, I. I could go into a lot of things, but you know, I've seen a, I've seen a lot of things. But you know, I never went to an RA movie until I was a senior in high school, which is, so, I guess, a, a kind of a long wait. <laughs> but you know, it's like I don't know. Like I remember my mom when I was a kid, she wanted to go see The Grudge, and I was terrified of scary movies back then. I was like in fifth grade when The Grudge came out, right. and I was like, no, I'm good. So she took my stepsister at the time. And they had a great, lovely time. But I also find it crazy that you can actually, with the parental, you know, control, you know, you can go to an R-rated movie and be any age, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it could be like a complete porno, and as long as your your mom yeah, and dad said it's okay, you're good. There there was a time, there was kind of funny, uh, when in the 90s, uh, there was a movie called The Specialist. It had Sylvester Stallone, that was in his prom, kind of, or someone in the prom, <laughs> but uh, it was about him being a hitman. Mm -hmm. Basically, being a hitman, killing people, action movie, major action movie, R-rated, of course. And I was sitting out there waiting for the. Me and uh, my friend were waiting out there for the 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 movies, or you know, kind of waiting for them to go to the theater so we go in. And I was like saying, I bet you ten bucks, bet you ten bucks there'll be somebody with a kid in there. And he said, he said, he told me, nah, no way, it's an R-rated movie, it's an action movie, they don't need to have it be in there. I'm like I bet you ten bucks there's a, a kid in there. As soon as we walked, in, started walking, we saw some people coming in, and they had a kid with a little kid with them. And this was an action movie; the people blew up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, that that was not necessary. I mean, it's not a kid. It, that was even like you know, you saw trailers to it. And that wasn't a kid it was movie. It's like taking a kid to go see zombie movies in the theater. <laughs> like uh, who would do that? I would never do that to my child. No. That's tra it's, it's traumatizing. I mean, I remember being traumatized as much as it has made me a movie buff and I love horror now. It took a long time for me to get over my nightmares and stuff. I feel like kids, the it's really traumatizing. Mm. You know, you just yeah. become. It kind of makes you a certain way if you. Now, now what do you think the age is though? If we're gonna go there, what do you think 16. of age? If you 15, had, 16. if you had a kid, if you had a kid, and you, uh, 
they want to go see an R-rated movie. Now, see, now you have the ability to right. stream. You have the ability to do all this stuff too. By this point, yeah. At this, at this point, so right. for me, it would be. <laughs> For I'd me, have a difference younger, as far as going out in public and what we watch at home. I would yeah. have a, sort of the same rules that my parents had. They were, they, they were very guarded over what right. I saw. But I could rent a rated R movie the first time when I turned 11. And I was fine. I didn't burn down the neighborhood or start killing anybody. You know, it was that okay. was when you were 16. <laughs> no, I, was, uh, I was 11. Yeah, well, I was 16. Yeah, yeah. When you burned down everything. Later on. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But, you know, and I got Commando and a few other things. Right. Know, I've talked about the store before, Peanuts, right downtown. They yeah. had all these different... Yeah. Now, I'd, Mom would still kind of look over what I... I, did. Yeah. I wasn't buying, like, the really horrific-looking titles right. of murderers and yeah. stuff like that. Even Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I kind of stayed away from a little bit. Yeah. You know, but I definitely I was in Schwarzenegger at the time in action movies, so all mm -hmm. that stuff I just started getting. <laughs> yeah, but let's be honest here. Nowadays, you know, kids nowadays, they see got everything. tablets. They're seeing everything. And they can see everything, so do you think it's really going to matter no. if they go to the theater and see anything? It helps, but it's not going to matter. I I'm mean, they can get, you I'm can sick. just get on the tablet yeah. and they can well, type in any... It could yeah. be anything. It could be. It could be. It could be a yeah. lot of dirty videos yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. Now me, I, 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 I don't give it to my four year old. Mm. I wouldn't. I, right. I don't play yeah. that. My niece has yeah. a freaking tablet, and I'm like, yeah. why would you get this? I mean, she plays games on it. I just, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I didn't get a phone until I was in eighth grade, and it sucked, and it didn't even work. My mom didn't even put minutes on it. I was Has like, the one you number that you just dial your parents? And that's yeah, it. like it was a Nokia. <laughs> it was and nothing. Well, see, the, that's the thing about it. You can, re is re you can regulate some stuff. Yeah. You, know, but you can have parental control on yeah. everything now, though. Yeah, right. you can. I've but seen it. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's why these, I like. But these kids nowadays, they're getting smart. They can go in there and override it. And let's be honest. Yeah. The, their parents are our age. So, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't have a lot yeah. of faith in <laughs> Yeah. Well, there are I mean, having kids, you look know. after. Well, well, see, no. I mean, you can only, but see, I mean, kids are gonna see stuff. I mean, I saw stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> when right. I was like, when sure. I, I saw when I was middle school and even younger, I saw some X-rated stuff. Yeah, Let's just sure. say that. I'm, right. I'm very late. Yeah, we're <laughs> no, at my house, not at my house, but other friends' house. Okay. If you so, had I mean, showtime, you could see stuff. Well, not even, yeah. not even. Yeah. It, it, this wasn't yeah. even cable. This right. was. Porn, right? Okay. Stuff. Right. That's different um, than horror. That's that's yeah. different than horror. So yeah, yeah, I saw sure. I saw stuff like this, you know, you know, middle school and younger here and there. Oh, yeah. So kids are gonna see stuff. You can't keep them sheltered in unless you have down to it too. Or, Sometimes, depending on what it is, yeah. not the porn part, but. <laughs> You know. It's good just to be honest. I found honesty with yeah. kids is probably the best way to go. My it parents is. are really honest with me about stuff, and you know, it was gentle. It was a gentle yeah. learning knowledge process. Yeah. I mean, filmmaking, right? Uh, yeah. You can't, yeah. Well, I mean, you can't like said not you can't show to a kid unless you t no. you know then they as soon as they have good weird. Sense. Yeah. You can't if you teach. Tie, tie them down to a chair and that's it, that's it. their life is just tied no, to a chair. You, and you get don't, the opposite you, result. Here's right. my logic. If I have a five-year-old and he or she wants to watch a horror movie with me, I'm going to let them. I'm going to let them because they're... Five year old, but you can select... Really depending on what it is. Yeah. 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 There's certain horror movies like, I no, we're not watching a Serbian film. I'm sorry. No, yeah, no, no. <laughs> it depends on what it is. I might let them yeah, for no. a split second. And C, as a parent, I would be like, because this is who I am, I would be like, you can make your decision to watch this and have a nightmare yeah. one time. See how they feel. See how right. they react. I probably wouldn't let them watch it again. I'm not, I'm kind of a, um, in, not inventor, <laughs> a let's see how this works type situation mm -hmm. person. If it doesn't work, I'll yeah. be like, well, I guess I won't do this again. It scared the crap out of him or her, you know, but I'm not going to, I, you're gonna love movies like you like I do. Yeah. Okay. And I watched Fright Night when I was with my my grandpa at seven and eight, and he would go, ah, you know, like I said, like he, it, it was fun. It mm. scared the crap out of me, but now I love Fright Night. They're gonna live. Fright Night's good. Yeah. They're just gonna have really bad nightmares like I did. <laughs> yeah. Poltergeist for me was. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 I saw Poltergeist yeah. pretty young too. Uh, I just it just um, well see Poltergeist was PG. I know. That's stupid, right? right? I remember. <laughs> I was That's, a bit this is before when I PG thirteen and, like, and everything. It probably would have been PG. It probably would have been PG thirteen. Is it the first yeah. version? I'm trying to think. 
what's that? The guy he's picking his face out in the mirror. mirror. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he puts that meat on the thing, and it turns to worms. Yeah, yeah. 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 The jello didn't come. Yeah, yeah. Per, uh, when I was yeah. little, was it mom, when he was looking in the mirror? Yeah, I think he's looking in the mirror. He's picking my hey. face. But my mom, she used to with movies like that. She would speed it up. My mom, my dad. Past the bad parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad, he wouldn't let me watch none of that. But my mom, she loves watching, but she'll speed it up so I wouldn't. You know, see but there anything. was, you know, your parents took at least measures. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's good. That's good. See, there we go. That's yeah, good. my dad, he didn't play that. He would, he wouldn't right. even let me drink. I would tell you just turn your head so I can watch yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or she would be like this. She'd be like, y'all turn your head to close your ears and all of that. Yeah. So well, I, I, again, it depends on how you, who your kid is, how you, you know, how you, right. you know brought them up and all that other stuff too but I mean you know it's it it's I mean uh, it, it, you know it all depends but I mean I just um I don't I really haven't thought about uh, as much as much as you know being you know because I don't have a kid and I'm really not having any kind of plans <laughs> having a kid any uh, uh, recently but um yeah. but uh, I just um I, I think um uh, I grew up, like I said, I saw a lot of things too before I even, before I even, um, I mean, but like I said, when I was a kid, when I was in, what, 1980, I guess, when whatever The Shining Wood came out, the commercial freaked the heck out of me. So I'm not going to, probably, my parents are not going to show me that movie or whatever, <laughs> probably. So it, it also depends on the kid, because like you said, kids can have, like, they may like a horror movie or something like that, but they, you know, they're, you know, they may be terrified and you're going to have to deal with it later on, too. Yeah. Um, and Way then, worse. And when they go to bed. Well, this is just answering to, answering what you was just saying. You were saying that, you know, pretty much kids can just go in the theater and watch yeah. party movies. I remember when I was, like, 16, you know, like, y'all y'all 17, y'all got an ID, you got to come in here. But nowadays, you can do anything now. Yeah, nothing, right. Nothing Less started. Started. The, the rating and system's still huge. Yeah, 15 year really olds look like 20 year olds now. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I think yeah. some still theaters, I mean, I don't know, I haven't been to one. I haven't had to deal with it, so I have But I, I think some theaters still do the, uh, you know, kind of like Wicked IDs or anything, I, something Dale, like I that. Daniel, I believe, does that at that theater. Because I remember being in there. Me and my fiance went in there last year. Mm -hmm. um, it was some teenagers in there, and I think they got carded. Okay. Like, I think they're the only ones that do it, but I know Greensboro. Yeah. Walk on in. Been yeah, Alamance. No, Alamance, I think, cards you too. No. Nope. Alamance, okay. um, what's it called? Carousel Cinema yeah. in Burlington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's a good theater. Yeah. I like yeah, Burlington and Danville. They're pretty good. Yeah. Um, but. Um, but yeah, I don't, you know, like I said, I've never had, haven't dealt with, had to deal with it in a very long time. Um, so, uh, but like I said, I think some theaters do still do, at least around here anyways. Some yeah. Everywhere else, do. I believe it's just whatever. They probably don't even care no more. All right. We're coming in kind of close here, hour and 37 minutes. And before we get out of here, just a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about maybe some of the things we've been watching lately it could be old stuff or new stuff and i'll start us off i've been having a lot of fun with and they're not a sponsor or anything like this but it's uh shutter.com s-h-u-d-d-e-r.com anyway sure. really cheap uh they got a real great trial thing for no money and you get to see a lot of stuff and what they have to offer but i've been catching up on like old horror that i didn't really get to watch a lot of when i was younger um, and some stuff I had seen, but I'm watching it again with sort of newer filmmaker eyes, like I can start studying stuff about, you know, I never looked at Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the past and thought about the cutting or, or really paid attention to all the elements that I was sort of hit with in that movie, but this time I did. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the ones available on Shutter.com. But um, what I realized was the opening to that movie was so awesome, very artsy, really kind of this rough, raw-edged kind of way. And they did these things where you could hear like a, it's a different kind of noise. It sounds like a screen door kind of thing, but it's a, it's a sound of an older camera taking a picture. And then for a split second or whatever, you see like a close up of like a decomposed hand, you know, or a body part or something nasty like that, but really quick, but such a clever way to open it. And then you, then they open with the sort of picture of like uh, one of the corpses in a graveyard had been arranged over like uh, uh, one of the graves you know 
-hmm. And then I started, I, I knew it was there, but I never paid attention story-wise. <laughs> but it was one of the family, of course, broke into the graveyard and liked to do that with the bodies because he's mentally off, mm -hmm. you know, and that's sort of the thing. But the opening of that was really neat and editing and stuff. And they brought that back when they revitalized the series, I think, uh, in the 90s, late 90s, I think, when they f they did a couple. Uh, it had a, a Lee Ermey in yeah, it. Arlie, Arlie, Arlie Ermey in it yeah. um, as the sort of crazy mm -hmm. older older guy in it. Um, but they did the same thing in the commercials for that. And I thought that was a new thing. Then I'd forgotten that they did that in the original right there. And I was like, ah. And no one could do it better than the original. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, okay, that was way better than the stuff they did later, which I really liked. Mm -hmm. But... It was neat to see that old concept that I thought was this fresh new thing isn't. It was back then, and it was done best then. <laughs> you know, it was, was kind of neat. Um, and also, just a little bit, uh, I've been watching a mix of the Italian stuff. Uh, I, I'd mentioned the term giallo film was a type of murder film they were making in Italy. And it was just usually nothing that much in, in, in effects is usually like the murderer was somebody wearing gloves with a knife. It was as simple as that. And, you know, um, but a lot of techniques of like the killers, uh, you could almost argue like shots that we get in Friday the 13th and in Halloween and stuff, the sort of voyeur view, maybe some of that, that the, they did a ton of that kind of stuff in these movies, you know, made late 60s through the 70s and even through early 80s, Argento especially was doing that stuff. Um, but a lot of these tropes and styles that were kind of started back then, how they're kind of reused, you know, rehashed in a way right there. Um, <clears throat> so that was kind of interesting to see. And different, uh, different filmmakers, like early on was like Mario Bava and stuff. And I liked his stuff quite a lot. Real stylized, a little more black and white, very noir lighting. And then you got uh, Lucio Fulci that came on. And Lucio Fulci, I love Zombie. And I advise, that's a neat movie, uh, watch it. But they used a lot of real worms and maggots and stuff in it. And then they had real guts. Like they had this lady vomiting up all these guts and what is it, City of the Living Dead or something. But it was just like, it makes, it, like I'm not really scared, I'm more nauseous. <laughs> but it bothered me in that way. So it's sort of part of the taste of horror that you're getting. And I know I'm going way too long winded here. But then, in the, and then I, you pick up on sort of, the, their protege or their early, the later guy Dario Argento kind of took over, but they all kind of overlapped and worked on each other's films and stuff. But you know, still seeing that Suspiria has still got a following, you know, and that they just did a remake of it. And I think there's a TV show. I'm not sure. Or there was talk of that. I could be wrong. I think there was talk of it. I think yeah, I heard some yeah, about, I don't know. That. I heard I don't know. about that. But it's just kind of interesting, you know. So what are some things that you guys uh, have been seeing lately? Um, I anything. could be anything. I've been watching, uh, well, uh, DC, on my DC Universe thing, the Titans, that show. Oh, yeah. That's been going on for a couple of, a few weeks now. Uh, they've been some good episodes. Interesting. I had Doom Patrol in one of the episodes. Oh, yeah. And that was pretty cool. And, uh, did they do Doom Patrol, they did, right? good, they did a good, actually, a rendition. That I, I was really surprised. I thought I'd be like, oh, okay, it was okay, you know, whatever. But they did a pretty good rendition right. um, of them. Uh, it's a dark, it's very, shot very dark. Sure. Most of the shows shot mm -hmm. very dark. Sort of like in the vein of uh, 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 Daredevil and that kind of look. Yeah. It's, it's oh, yeah, it's got, it's got a blue tint to it. It okay. always seems like there's a, when it's dark, it's always a blue tint to it. Okay. Um, the, uh, I did watch Daredevil season three uh, on Netflix. I've watched all that. Yeah. And like I said, I think it's better than the second season was. Sweet. And so, uh, it doesn't drag. It doesn't, doesn't it feel like there's, going, a, it yeah, doesn't feel like an episode spots. saying, oh, okay, golly. Sometimes it's like, there's one episode. <laughs> Let me get filled this one episode or whatever. Usually they have a one episode that seems like a filler episode, but it's they, all exposition. I've never, yeah. this whole show didn't never feel like a, That's like good. They have, or the season didn't feel like a filler. Um, That's they, good writing. Yeah. And then, um, I've been watched, <laughs> I watched Cheers on, on Netflix lately. <laughs> Um, uh, I noticed there was an episode just, just, just like yesterday, I think I was watching an episode that, ha how it was edited. It was funny because it was like one scene 
because he didn't have that huge bar, which is never right. you never saw a bar that a huge space. before. Yeah. There's a huge space, but it's kind of funny because the camera was on one side of the bar and it was filming uh, filming the cat or the people who were sitting there. It was like three people on on in the bar uh, that side, right? right. Then it cut. Then it uh, then it goes down to um. Uh, there's three people there. Yeah, three people. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's three people there. Then they cut down to the other side of the bar with right. the, you know talking. They're doing their talking thing, and then they cut back to the other one. And there's only one person at the bar, the bar now, and they never show the per people getting up or anything like that. So there's only one person now at the right. other end. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because they never show. It's just the way they cut to it, or it never. They disappeared <laughs> yeah. from that side of the bar, and it's just like <laughs> so. Yeah, and it's like, well, we don't have the shot. Yeah, We're cut anyway. Basically, is what it is. Yeah, okay. and it's kind of funny because because the person that was at the side, there was three people, and one of the people that dealing with, it was Cliff, the guy who was a mailman yeah. or whatever on there. He's going to do a scene with people coming in the inside the bar, right? And say so when they do that, when they come inside the bar. Those two people, other two people that were sitting They're right gone. beside him, are gone. Right. So it's kind of funny to see that. Like I never knew mm -hmm. stuff like that before, but it's kind of I noticed. I've been noticing a lot of stuff in like sitcom, old sitcoms. Oh yeah. How it edited, you know, edit, they edit, and it wasn't edited like they just cut and you just saw it really cut, and, you know, and they right. just disappeared. Right. The cut was smooth, but, but it was just you know, it, yeah. yeah, they just they just like I said, it was just. A, you know, it was kind of funny. It was smooth. And if you're following story, you're probably not going to be yeah. paying attention. To yeah, I mean, I wouldn't yeah. have noticed that it had a. I mean, maybe I just saw it more than because you know I'd been kind of well, yeah, you know, been, doing this stuff yeah. or whatever. But <laughs> I just the, the thing about sitcoms now today to me are really cut, and you see them right. really cut, and it's just like mm -hmm. who did the editing on this stuff? Because it's just like really just like. They'll be talking to somebody, and all of a sudden there's a cut, and they get, mm. <laughs> and it was just like, what were they talking about? You know, they just cut a line or somebody that looks right. like they just cut a line, Maybe and it's they just need like to cut air out for yeah. time or something. Yeah, but it's yeah. just like, and it, they're two characters talking to each other, and they're maybe back and forth, you know, cutting between the back and forth right. of their shots. Sure. And it's just like, and, you know, it, somebody says something funny and everything, or quote unquote funny, um, and then they cut to the other person and go, mm, yeah. And it's just like they cut a line from them or something like that. So there's a discontinuity on yeah, the Yeah, it's like, that's weird, because I never, yeah. never, I mean, I'm not saying they never did that back when we were, you know, back sure. in the old sitcoms, but it just, right. they, they either did a more fluid, take or, or fluid yeah. or it was just like because these are prime time shows too that I'm watching it's not like right. they're uh, I mean this show I was watching it, it it was a prime time show it wasn't like it was you know whatever sure. but these I mean it's weird I just noticed that yeah. sorry I, um, I, I went off that but anyway um that's what I've been kind of watching lately. how about you Ed? Well, I, I actually watched last night, and it's it's funny, I watched it last night and then I watched it the night before that because I keep falling asleep to it. Again, I fell asleep last night with my cat on me on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Watching it, didn't finish it. Superstar. Superstar? Superstar. Um, What's that again? Oh my god, you never seen Superstar. It came out uh, yeah. in the 90s, was it in the 90s? With yeah. With Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. And the and girl, the, that, yeah, the woman, she's that. funny, she's on SNL. Okay. Or is it an SNL movie? Oh, at Sherry O'Terry? No. Oh, it's, no. Um, she's got the brown hair, she's got the... Yeah. Christian wig? No. No. She's the older one, she's the one that's always like, got the she, funny voice. Um, she does a lot of... I can't I think of her name. Um, she also played in The Grinch Till Christmas is the mom. Okay. With the one with Jim Carrey. Yeah, I, I, I boycotted that because I love the original cartoon so much. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I boycotted it too. I, I did. But, but I know, I know the. I know. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't. I, yeah. I couldn't tell you her name. She's funny. You've seen her before. Right. And um. She's not old old school SNL. No, yeah. she's old school. She's, she's somewhat old school because. Did she used to do the. Uh, she was. Uh, she was on there. Tomlin. No, 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 not that old. Okay. Not that old. Uh, <laughs> old school. Um. Uh. The. She. Um. She was on there right, right when they were doing when the Phil Hartman and all of them left. She right, was still okay. on there, kind of like a feature player. But then she became a main cast player yeah, when when right. Phil Farrow and all of them came Any up there. No. 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 <laughs> anyway, if you're trying to really yeah, 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 we could. But she's funny. She's right. really great, and right. she plays this. Kill me right now. I, she, I wouldn't even call her mentally handicapped right. or <laughs> mentally. She's mentally unstable. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's just okay. So she's it's a um, it's uh her name is uh Mary Caffel a Caffiger Caffiger Gallagher or something. Right. She's, Mary Catherine Gallagher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And she goes. Yeah. She goes to a um, Christian school. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And she does all these like really horrible like yeah. And she yeah, like lifts her. Mind. She goes yeah. in the beginning of the movie. Yes. She's like, Ooh. I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> she is funny. <laughs> and then Will Ferrell is stupid, and yeah, I just love him. Of course. And he just plays this jock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've seen it or heard it or whatever. Yeah. It's just it kills me. And I've been in this comedy thing lately, so I watched that. Last night, I've been a movie buff lately. I'm always right. a movie buff, but yeah. I never have time, so I'll stay up late now watching right. movies. I right. go through those, and in, in the winters I do. That's like my hibernation, but I'm not hibernating. <laughs> um, so I was watching Orange County the, with Tom Hanks' son. Uh -huh. I love that movie. It's it's uh, very too yeah. early 2000s. It's mm -hmm. got a lot of like Butterfly, the song Butterfly in it. Okay. Um, but like, not Limp Biscuit, but some other end. Wasn't it band called? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But anyways. Okay. Um, I, I, I know the of the movie you're talking about. And then I watched Dr. Moreau, uh, Mysterious Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh, yeah. I loved, oh my god, yeah. I want to watch it again. That's oh, my, cool. My girlfriend was asleep when I was watching it, because I told you I've been watching it until like 3 o'clock in the morning. And you'll never forget that little dude playing the piano, will you, ever again? <laughs> <laughs> no, he they they really um it was a really messed up movie. Mm -hmm. It was really um sick. It is. It's a sick movie. Um right. and there was the part where they were all humping each other and right and the, he was sitting there drunk in the thing and I was like wow yeah it was gross like I would totally not want to live there that guy did not want to be there no um what was his name the the main, main character yeah um uh, starts with a D don't it yeah. For, I forget. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but anyways, the English guy did not want to be there, and I did not blame him now. But I, I didn't. I thought the cat lady was gonna live. Right. The water boy girl. <laughs> I oh, thought, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, Vicky Valancourt. <laughs> oh yeah. I thought yeah. Vicky Valancourt was totally gonna live. I was like, oh, Rupert, yeah. and I thought they did a scene where she was a cat because they. She's got a name that sounds a lot like a band, but it's a Veruca Salt or something like that. It's some and her real name. Yeah. Yeah, she's got some. It's not Veruca Salt, which is a band name, but it's something like that, which is. <laughs> I'll have to look her up. I didn't even know she. I mean, I knew she always played some evil, like she was in the craft and stuff, which was, she's a great actress. Oh, I like the craft. I miss her. Like That's I wish she name. would be more of a villain. She's such a villain. She is a villain. She just, it's not that she doesn't want to act, but she just, you know, it's hard to, you know, once you're, you're a bright and shiny star in Hollywood for a few moments, and then for whatever reason they aren't using you anymore. So you gotta make friends with the indie world and, and all over you know, yeah. Which is crazy. But she's also, like, I see it because she's like, but she's a style. Right. She's not just like, so like Will Smith or, you know, anybody else that can just be different parts. Right. I see her as a style. Yeah. She is only she's like for a low budget movie now it seems like i'm not saying she couldn't do higher budget movies and she's not right. worth it i see it though why it would be so hard for her right you know but i think like her big, last biggest movie was probably war boy right i think that's been a while that's and been a good one very, very yeah, long yeah, time that, which is one of my favorites yeah, i know that just you're talking yeah. about that. but um well, no, there was one she other movie. Really cool. She does seem really cool mm -hmm. um there was one other movie that movie i'm just gonna keep going with that movie real sure. quick um the Mysterious Island of Dr. Moreau. So how was it watching it after seeing the documentary on the Even Mayfair? better. Yeah, yeah. It made cool. the movie even better. Sweet. I appreciated it. <laughs> I appreciated it, and I was curious. I'm obsessed with... Um, did, you, did you look out look out for uh, Robert Stanley and the dog mask when they were, like, raising hell later At the on end in the of the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I did not... He's in the background, like, yeah. and he sets it on fire and all kinds of stuff. It's kind Dude, of, yeah. I... Was gonna totally look out for him, but then I got so caught what up with the hyena. Story? Yeah, sure. The mean hyena. Mm -hmm. oh, I kind of yeah. felt bad for him at first, and then I didn't when he yeah. started to become evil. I felt like, bad for the uh, actor <laughs> in that costume. And they, and they uh, treated him like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. See, it, I, now that I'm watching the documentary, I remember a lot. Yeah. That was a long documentary, first yeah, of all. Yeah, well, it was. But second of all, now that I'm watching it, it's like I forget kind of what's. I was sure. so into the movie, but I can say this. I do not like um, Van or whatever his name is. Val Kilmer? Val Kilmer. I keep wanting to say Van. <laughs> I, I say Val Kilmer after I say Van. I don't like him anymore. After right. figuring out he was such a moron and a dick, I just right. like, I don't like well, him. Well, watch some of his early stuff. Watch... Uh, uh, I love Genius. Oh, yeah. Real Genius, Genius is yeah. great. And yeah. then uh, the... Shoot. 
What's the comedy spoof World War II movie? Top Secret. Top Secret. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I see some of his older stuff. I just don't like him as a person. Right. You know, I don't know him, but just from the things I've heard. Right. But, um, and I'm not the biggest fan of his movies, but I really did like the movie. I like the costumes Mm -hmm. for um, for what year it was, and, you know, it's just... Good makeup. It was good makeup. Mm -hmm. It looked horrible. I bet it was just the worst outside in that costume. And you know, we watched the oh, documentary. Yeah. You, but it's <laughs> just sweating and waiting. <laughs> and you know they had to be in that costume for hours. I never All saw right. the pig lady, though. There was a lot of things that were in the I documentary. Know. Yeah, that, that didn't really... Yeah, yeah that didn't, wonder... didn't go into the movie. So, like, they cut it really short, yeah. I guess. But... Um, and knowing they were all on drugs secretly was just mm-hmm. super and fascinating because I was looking for everything as much as I could. Right. You know? <laughs> we need to watch the movie in class. We really do. It's on Voodoo for free right now. We could probably do that like uh, during this class after we're done with the podcast. And y'all want to work? I could just put it up on the screen. Yeah. And yeah. You know, it'll be it's there good. to kind of sample. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's my thing lately, right now, for the now. Okay. Uh, Nate, what have you been watching lately? Mm, I haven't got. Mm-hmm. Or what's the last? Say, what's the last thing. stuff you were watching? Mm, what have I been? What is the last? Thing? What did I watch? Mm, I haven't. Can't even think. Um, I'm gonna play Jeopardy music during this point. Mm-hmm. Stop. Did you see the news last night? News is the news. I haven't. I'll be honest. Yeah, I haven't. Even, <laughs> yeah, you haven't had time to watch anything. Yeah. I haven't had time to watch anything besides maybe YouTube videos. Right. Uh, but I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't even dived into anything. I haven't even called up on the Empire. Any? Um, uh, were you watching any music videos on YouTube or anything like uh, that? No, just just YouTube, like just YouTube instructional videos. stuff. Usual um, stuff like that. No. no uh, I what's the last movie you saw? What's the last movie? What was it called? I think it was Take 10 on Netflix. Okay. Um, that's an independent film. Right. What's um, it about? It was another film. What did I watch? Yeah, I can't remember anything right now at the moment. <laughs> that's yeah. okay. I can't, I can't, I'm blank. That's all right, I'm that's all right. Blank. I got a couple things, uh, other things I can talk about, two other, one or two other movies I can talk about, and then we'll just wrap it up. Um, one, Going back to old school, old school, uh, Mr. Hitchcock, he's got this film called Rope, which also you can find on Shudder. But it's kind of Rope. Rope. It's called Rope. And it starts off with these two guys murdering a third dude, you know, a third person. But the whole movie, and I've only watched the first 20 minutes of it. I'm watching it sort of uh, like a serial. Like when I have a little (laughs) bit of time, I'll watch parts of it. But it's all, uh, the whole point of the movie is called Rope, but it's all in one shot. Yeah. Now, they find places to make the cuts, but sort of in seamless ways, as you guys know, a few tricks as far as cutting and stuff. Um, but it's all like, the whole point is it's all real time and all that kind of stuff. And it's probably an early, maybe a late 50s, yeah, I'd say maybe even mid to late 50s uh, movie. It's, it's mm-hmm. older, but it's in color. Oh. And it's all done uh, like that. And it, it's kind of interesting. They... So far, they've killed this person, but they put him in a table that's there in the same room, and they decorate it, and then they have all these people over for a house party, you know, a little dinner party. Like Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, and you're starting to put the pieces together and stuff like, two of the people there are the dead guy's parents and and weird stuff like that. So I'm just sort of watching. I don't know where it's going to go or anything like that, but I'm like, okay, pretty interesting. So this is why... uh, uh, what, what's the famous, he's dead now, a famous horror director who did uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, Wes Craven. Wes Craven. His mom would tell him, like, oh, uh, Hitchcock's that horrible little man that makes those horrible little movies. And Wes Craven's that. like, oh, really? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how Wes Craven did it. And, uh, you know, I thought that was, that was uh, pretty neat. So far, it's a pretty neat movie. Um, and another one on a documentary uh, vein that I'm, I kind of dig, I kind of dig this part of, uh, I'm not a huge punk fan, but I like the, uh, the aesthetic around like that movement, like late seventies, early eighties was called decline of Western civilization by uh, Penelope Spheris, uh, who went on to direct Wayne's world and, and stuff like that. But really cool. It's all these early bands like the germs X, um, just a whole bunch of early punk bands, Black Flag before even Henry Rollins was even in the band, um, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, all in a little place in California where it happened. But um, pretty neat to see that and then sort of seeing how 
because it was sort of like a modern movement in music and how that's still there, you know. Punk is different than what punk was then, but it's sort of interesting to see that and then it became super mainstream with pop punk and stuff like that in the 90s and all. And, and it's just kind of neat to go way back and look at like kids, kids are still sort of the same. <laughs> Even way back then, it doesn't, if you were to look at parts of it, you couldn't really tell it any different than how things even look today. Kind of interesting, you know, within that kind of thing. And that's all I've got for uh, right now. Anybody else got some closing words? Oh, uh, uh, rest in peace, Stanley. Oh, yeah, yes. Like, Stanley passed away on Monday, on Thursday, or observer, observation of Yeah, uh, uh, Thursday, Thursday, but yeah, he. Yeah. He was a pioneer, or he was a pioneer, and he, he uh, I mean, I didn't cry particularly, I didn't, you know, cause yeah. I, th I saw it coming, it was, he, he was, was 95, yeah. yeah, he lived a really long <laughs> yeah. life, yeah, he, he had a good life and, and everything, and it, his wife had passed away, like, just Years recently, ago. like a year or so ago, Years so, ago. I mean, yeah. it's, Usually that's when kind of like the other mm -hmm. spouse. Don't say stuff. that, okay? Because I just lost my grandpa like a year ago. Sorry. I swear, I just uh, yeah, I was right. Sorry. But um, yeah. but not it, always that way. It was no. he, he did it. He he had a good life, and he did you know he did create a he, lot of. In a way, you could say he united the world because I mean, Spider Man and and Hulk and all those, everybody all over the whole world likes mm. these characters. Those were all his ideas, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Spider-Man, Hulk, uh, the X-Men. Um, those were all Daredevil. Stan Lee, Daredevil. Yeah, a lot of those. Came from his brain. And he was, what, was he in his, must have been late 30s, early 40s. He was in the comic book business, but not making a lot of money. He was almost going to call it quits. Mm -hmm. And then those titles took off. Yeah, he, he wrote Spider-Man as a, because Spider-Man didn't appear first in Spider-Man. It was a... Yeah. Uh, Amazing, awesome. amazing fantasy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, the whole book, the book is just amazing fantasy. It was about you know. And that's a short story stuff. in it, right? Yeah, it was a short story in amazing yeah. fantasy. And he was just like, I wonder what did this character, and I'm gonna do it, and it did, probably won't sell nothing, and I'm just gonna do it, and. Uh, Guy gets bit by a spider. Then, yeah, yeah, and, and he says, <laughs> I'm gonna do this, and his wife was like saying, Well, you know, just do it, and you know, then. You know, if he doesn't do anything, then you can get out, or you know, oh, yeah. get out, and then that sold, so it blew up, and that's where we're. where One of my rich. cakes growing up was a Spider-Man cake mm -hmm. in the shape of Spider-Man. I was a little kid. So, I mean, I mean, he like a lot of even star, big star, movie stars have put their you know wishes to you know or you know condolences to him because I mean oh yeah they start I mean Robert Jane Jr. maybe not had even have a his he. He was on a downslide when he got Iron Man, yeah. so he was he could have you know been right in toilet right now, or whatever for sure. type thing. For sure, had you know it not been for Iron Man or whatever, and so yeah. uh, you know there was a bunch of like I stars mean, that think about all the costumes and stuff too that they've made just because of his movies. Oh, all the... cosplay's a religion now. I mean, he started like... with the comics, though, didn't he? Yeah, the comic books. So he mm -hmm. started with the comics, and then they picked up the comics with the movies. Later on, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, was that his idea, or people just picked it up? Because I knew it was a business decision. I'd say, I mean, you know, there were a few early attempts with some early material, '70s, I think. I yeah. don't know if in the '60s so much. They more. had they had a one serial of Captain America, but that wasn't necessarily. Right. He wasn't part of uh, Marvel Comics at the time. Uh, right. It was Timely Comics, I believe. Did he draw right. the characters too? He didn't draw. He usually had an artist that yeah. did draw. Yeah, he was just uh, he, he as wrote, a writer, he wrote, he wrote, editor, and you know. Yeah, he was a, one. Of the, he was kind of the he ran it, right? Was he CEO of the company? Yeah, he became uh, uh, editor in chief of Marvel Comics. That's right. And, and chief, but yeah. then um, he went, you know, kind of gave passed it on as he got older or whatever. Right, he became a figurehead. So yeah. who does DC? Well, that's its own. That's uh, DC was the first, right? They started. Well, I don't. I honestly don't know who started. Uh, who started first or not? I don't I read don't, comics. I, I should. Yeah. Um, but DC. There's um, a lot of horror comics. Lots of. But them. um, but Marvel uh didn't start. Like I said, they started out being timely comics, which Captain America was never. I don't think he he wasn't part of Marvel until like later on. That's interesting. I he was in a separate thing because uh, Jack Kirby he uh Stanley didn't create. 
Captain America, Jack Kirby, and I right. um, oh, can't think of the other guy, guy's name. Um, who created? There's two other guys who created right. him. He just brought him into the Marvel universe. Sure. Uh, Stan Lee did uh, later on with the Avengers. Well, Kirby then joined Marvel, and yeah, they, and they eventually he, did who, that too. Who's responsible for Green Lantern? I don't know. Because I, I wasn't a fan. I'd have to look. I have to look that <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, well, the DC, characters started out yeah, being yeah. a different character than even in the Golden Age, what they call Golden Age comics. Green yeah, Lantern right. was, he was blonde. He had this really colorful costume. He had like a red shirt, green pants, red boots. Um, had a purple, had a purple cape, uh, and a purple yeah. mask. He, yeah, right. he was blonde. He had uh, he was a Green Lantern, he was, and they called him Green Lantern because he used a lantern to charge up his ring, similar to the later on Hal Jordan. Right. But he uh, his his ring had uh, it was invulnerable to wood, wood anything wood he wouldn't work on or whatever. It was weird. It was a it was the Golden Age, so you gotta remember it's a very early stuff going on. But his his ring would basically work. Similar to the old, the Green Lantern, and then in the Sil and then in the Silver Age, then they they made Hal Jordan and stuff like that. That's when Hal Jordan became the next Green Lantern. Uh, Alan Scott was the name of the guy who was a Green Lantern, but he wouldn't. Ryan know. Reynolds became Green Lantern, the recent one. Didn't he? Right. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, Alan Scott was the character name. Uh, yeah. uh, the. Uh, oh, sorry. I've never. I've never. The, yeah, I've always uh, seen it for once. And the, I, well, I mean, no, I mean, I'm talking about, uh, yeah, we're all, I'm talking about like real names of the characters or whatever. That's from the comics. I'm, uh, oh, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. I'm talking about character names. But uh, Alan Scott was the name of the character of the original Green Lantern, his secret identity, if you will. Um, he uh, he kind of went. They went. You know, he put they put him aside and brought in like made a different Green Lantern with Hal Jordan and stuff like that. But anyway, um, but that's that's. But that, yeah, I don't know who, I don't know who created it. It's okay, them. I'm not to investigate it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're here at the end. I was here, I was thinking we are going to have a shorter mm -hmm. episode this week, and it's been a longer episode. We're at uh, two hours and five minutes. Wow. Six, uh, seconds. Um, so, anybody got any last minute uh, things to say? All right, going once, going twice, going three times. All right, so uh, thank you all for joining us, and if you got some incredible comments, and I know you do, hit us up, and we will talk about them next time. Uh, take care and uh, rest in peace, Stanley.